live from the Loki Studios for this Thursday, the 4th of April, it's Back Pocket! Brought to you as always by our very good and very nice Back Pocketeer patrons. This week starring... Little Ragged Blossom, Steph Ben Dixon. What do you think changed this time? You mean the Captain pregnancy? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Was it, a, was it a certain position? <laughs> Let's get into the specifics. <laughs> Snugglepot, Gus Ronald. Their heart's not really in it. Oh, cuddle pie, Peter Burns. If I had not shown up, there wouldn't be any lighting. <laughs> We'd be in the dark, not just from a, uh, a on a physical level, but also in the realms of ignorance. Uh, we would all be have left, left in ignorance. And special guest, head of gaming at Cure Cancer, Shane Bailey. And behind the scenes, it's Josh, Will, Ben and Ruby. This week on the show, we hone in and tell all. Now get ready, it's time for Welcome Back, Pocket. <laughs> Thank you so much, chat, for being here. We always love it when you rock up. Uh, I mean, we, you, wouldn't, we wouldn't do it if they did, not. would we? You could be watching oh. other stuff, but you choose to watch us. No, that totally. was you so You choose grateful. not only to watch, but engage. Like, that's the important <laughs> part. Get in and type some stuff. Put some emotes in there. Put, yeah. Get your little emojis out. Have fun. Oh. Get your, your little emojis out. Yeah, have fun. You know, that's got oh. energy of a grab your controllers. Good game's going to be up next on ABC too. Oh, <laughs> hey, gamers, come on down. Get your hey, gamers. Beach headset. <laughs> come on down. Uh, special guest on the show this week. Shane, Shane. Hello, everyone. Thank you for yeah. having me. Good to be back. How are yeah. we? Yeah. Good. Fre- we say friend of the show, but sometimes it's like, We've just met them and we're like friend of the show. <laughs> but I'm like real Actual friend friends. Of the sh- Actual friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't Matching need a, brand You don't need the of the show caveat. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, you've, uh, you've toured the studio <laughs> many a time. I know. You've joined yeah, us on some uh, sponsored streams. He's gone. That's it. Peter's out of here. Oh, no. Um, oh, he's got a jacket. Yeah. Oh, go for it. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Uh, uh, jackets. Not your first time here. No, no. Thanks for having me back. But um, you're last. Always great to be, to be here. Um, yeah, we'll get into it, but uh, I'm very sadly wrapping up my time with Cure Cancer, so I want to come along and say thank you for all the amazing support that you give our charity uh, and have some fun uh, in, in my last week. We so do you. the smallest amount compared to our audience, realistically, so Absolutely. it's nice that you're they're, here to thank They're them. the heroes, yes. Because they're the real ones. <laughs> exactly. yes. We yeah. just make noise and wear costumes and... Uh, charming as, but they're the ones who really support. Uh, charming. I love as. that you started out being so self-deprecating, and then, and then you were like, and, then, and just be generally amazing. Just generally, <laughs> just excellent. Just exude confidence and charm at every turn. Uh, well, we're happy you're here. We sad to hear that, but obviously on to mm. bigger and better things, or other things. Other things. Other yeah. things. Yes. That's a better way to put it. Uh, While you're still cancer still needs curing, so please support. Oh, the you, charity. Did, you didn't do it yourself. No, no, yeah. it's one of my. It was one of my KPIs. Good, good effort. Good effort. Like, sure. You tried. Unfortunately, <laughs> really tried. Yeah. I mean, it was in the title, mate. You yeah. should have known going in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my Halo skills are useless. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Uh, uh, amazing. Well, um, we put I'm a ex- dent in cancer. Yes, that's it. That's yeah. it. We lower the shield, so to yeah, speak. yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh my god. Uh, but there's a cool uh, Xbox partnership that's coming up as well. Yes, yeah, I wanted done, to yeah. tease that uh, being on the show. So, cool. um, just for you guys, just for the back pocketeer community. We have a special announcement with Xbox happening on Tuesday next week. But I thought mm. I'd come on the show, give you a little bit of a sneak peek um, at what's going on. I won't spoil what the reveal is uh, or exactly what we're doing, but I think Josh has some... Can you say world exclusive as you reveal these photos? World exclusive. No, it, it's oh, world, world premiere. 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 World premiere. World premiere. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, so uh, my, my, my. really exciting Whoa. collaboration. It's a, a, an idea that I had maybe nine months back, expi- inspired, pardon me, by something else that Xbox did that was really, really awesome. You sneezed on a controller. And, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I can see how you got there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yes, it's nine months in the making and it's happening next week in my last week. So I'm glad I could get this one out the door before I um, <clears throat> uh, take off into the horizon. Uh, so yeah, look forward to that on Tuesday. But I thought I'd come on the show and give the Pocketeer community, because you guys have been so amazing, mm. a bit of a tease about something, an exciting collaboration that's aware. We're so where, where are people keeping their ears and eyeballs to I see I would keep an uh, eye on game on underscore cancer on socials okay. and Xbox ANZ socials as well. 
Yeah. Cool. Nice. Next yeah, week, nice. Tuesday I'm intrigued. You had my interest? Now uh, you have my curiosity? So, yeah, There's a curiosity exactly. and then attention? You, you, you have curiosity my attention? And attention? Well, that's just it. getting my attention yeah, in general. I, th- I believe, yeah, I believe yeah. what they say now is... Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I believe the phrase now is, I am seated. I am oh, seated. Okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I like or that say one. less. I hear say less. Yeah, I don't like that, that one. Don't like that one? The, I like uh, say Gen less. Z doing that. I don't you like said you like that one because it's grammatically correct. <laughs> I like I'm seated because I'm getting old and that generally <laughs> plays nicely into <laughs> being yeah, 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 yeah. When you buy tickets to comfortable. When you buy tickets to Pearl Jam and they're seated, you're like, excellent. Excellent. Oh, I do like that. When everyone at a concert, if we all sat down, we could all see We could all see everyone. I live by that. They're ranked seats for a reason, mate. Yeah, Why up in the nose, I, 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 I buy seated concert tickets now. There's always that moment where I'm like, oh, well, we'll stand for yeah. this one. And there's people behind you being like, what the fuck are you doing? But I this went is the and seated saw... section. I'm like, but we'll stand for we'll this stand one. We'll stand for this one song. It's a song. you got to stand for this I one. I may have told this before. I went and saw Peter Coombe at the Corner Hotel. Uh, he's a child uh, singer. Fine, they're going to slippery dip. That's the one. Oh, and yeah. the first thing that happened at the pub, he's like, all right, everyone on the floor. And it was like, yes. Yeah. Everyone oh, just sat down, cross-legged. Amazing. People had newspaper hats and toffee apples. And we were just sat on the floor. And he just rocked it out. And we are like, this And is he great. just rocked it out. <laughs> it was a sticky floor, but we're like, fuck it. We'll take sitting down over standing here swaying awkwardly. So <laughs> the last band I saw live was actually the Eagles years ago now. Oh, man. No one can stand. Thankfully, I was about to say, thankfully, that demographic much preferred to <laughs> yeah, 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 stay yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was great. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, welcome Stella. to the show. Oh, Actual special guest. Yeah. You missed out yeah. on some scratches. Uh, well, that's already. cool. Uh, yeah, so Tuesday next week, keep mm. our eyes and ears out for something announced there. Yes. Uh, sure. Obviously, we're still partnered and ambassadors with uh, Game on Cancer, Cure Cancer, hence we're rocking the merch. Uh, Absolutely. We'll be doing stuff with them Pins. later in the year as well. Uh, hashtag Scotty fuck cancer, Serpent says in the chat. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll be continuing our support, even if some of us won't be. Oh. Got it. I'm actually going to miss what we're doing later this year. You can like, still come. You'll to be that. there. I'll be here. Sure. I'll be here, yeah. like running coffees and that sort of yeah, thing yeah, as a yeah, volunteer. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, now yeah. that I like. That's, <laughs> that's my one You're skill. Welcome back I can offer on the day. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, very excited. Stay tuned for that as well. That's yeah. like a couple of months away. Another to be announced. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Cool. Exciting yeah. things on the horizon for you then, Shane. Thank you. Before we back it up with a little bit of backup, though, we'd like to first talk about. Tonight's stream sponsor, Generation Games. Absolutely, Ooh, yeah. Nice. Exciting things ahead for Sydney siders and anyone who has the ability to get to Sydney. <laughs> to travel. <laughs> get yourself a car. Get yourself a plane. Get yourself. Uh, just get yourself here. Hire a helicopter. Come to Sydney. Uh, Generation Games is running on April 20th and 21st at the International Convention Center down in Darling Harbour. Lovely. Um, if you exclamation mark Generation Games, you'll uh, see all the links to find out more and get yourself some tickets. Um, and this is the same events team that put on Oz Comic Con. Uh, so there's plenty of experience in putting these shows together uh, behind this show. This is uh, the first generation games, uh, and they've already started to pull together an excellent uh, lineup of things to do uh, on over the weekend. Uh, Gus Retro Gaming Zone. Oh look, I'll always uh, I'll always head for a beanbag lounged area with some CRT <laughs> TVs and some old old consoles that feel young, and I'll stay seated for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a yeah. heap of there's a heap of stuff these guys are doing. First and foremost, not enough gaming conventions just in general. So this is awesome that mm. there's a new one coming to Sydney. Uh, so do make sure you get down there if you can. And then yeah, I'm personally looking forward to the fact that I do love going down there, and they always just have like retro consoles, which a make me feel very old because mm-hmm. I'm like these aren't that old. Uh, but you can then see heaps of younger gamers down there. They're checking them out and getting hands on for a first time with consoles they've never played. Mm. And equally at the same time, you've got oldies and even older than me down there who are like, just, they get older? They get older than this. Oh my uh, lord. And they get down there and they're like, I don't know, it's just like a warm, fuzzy feeling. We went to a convention <laughs> up in um uh up in Mackay? northern Mackay, where it was just all old Mario Kart, and it was I just like that. everyone was just so into that more than any of the new stuff. <laughs> well, all the controls are wired, so you have to be serious. Exactly. Were you, so there, when, was that, were you there that year when we um they had set up like an outdoor uh, obstacle course for kids to run through and then they gave people like a bunch of like bow and arrows with like the bobbles on the end of the thing. Oh, yeah. And so they were just like, Bajo, Hex, Goose. Yeah. You there that year? Bajo, Hex, Goose. No, they made us shoot at children. <laughs> well, we can confirm <laughs> the Generation <laughs> Games will not have any child violence. Well, we can't confirm that actually. We can't confirm that, but 
That was something that was at I that I remember convention. getting quite yeah. heated. I was like, I missed one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the tabletop RPG zone stuff. Yes, sorry, yeah. <laughs> you can't shoot kids at uh, uh, Generation Games, but you can. There might great. be a chance. We'll never there say might ne- be a chance. Never say never. Never yeah, say right. never. Never yeah, say never. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, you've ne- if you've always wanted to try Dungeons & Dragons, but you don't know where to start, then D&D New South Wales are going to be running a learn-to-play one-shot adventure session. Yeah, awesome. Um, or a series of them um, across the weekend. So they've got some uh, new players that, that want to try it out. Then you can go and jump in with some uh, more experienced players and... Um, the one shots are really great because it uh, just gives you kind of a taster of a, of a D&D campaign, but in a yep. condensed amount of time. This is going to be an indie showcase um, and people that will help you, you know, learn all these different kinds of tabletop RPGs, yep. which is great. There's still, there's a um, uh, Pride and Prejudice Jane Austen tabletop yep. that I want to really want to play. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's really, it's I really, really cool. want to shoot the people playing the Jane Austen <laughs> with, with, a, with a bow and arrow with a bobble on the end. Just yeah. combine so, both things. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. I mean, well, that should be really out. fun. It's like even people who want to play D&D in groups still have trouble finding them and getting the time and doing it all together. Yeah. So an event like this is perfect because it's like you've got like-minded <laughs> people who want to do it and it's not like, oh, you free Tuesday, no wins. Okay, forget it. We tried. The one shot didn't work. Uh, yeah. This is a perfect place to go and uh, find, as I said, like-minded D&D, yeah. uh, or, I, either experts or newbies. There's heaps of people that I've spoken to who are like, I've always wanted to play D&D, but I just never really know like who to play with or where to start. And that's um, this is your opportunity. You know what it mm. also is? Best place to try out a new voice for your character, I mean, oh, not just in general. Oh, okay. Like, just just throw caution to the wind and, like, voice your character when you're just yeah. there with strangers who will soon become friends uh, at, like, a group D&D. Oh, thing. I was going like, to say, you'll never see these people again. <laughs> also <laughs> yeah, that. Well, totally. Also that. Embarrass yourself as much as you like. Go because for it. Yeah, there's nothing yeah, to lose. Yeah. Nothing to lose. Yeah. Uh, Cure Cancer is going to be represented there <laughs> as well. Yes, that's nice. right. Uh, the team is organising a couple of panels on the Sunday lunchtime of thereabouts, I think 12.30 and 1.30. Yep. Um, I won't say exactly what they are, just a little, little bit of tease. Mm. Um, but, yeah, go say hello to the team have some fun um yeah excited we can be part of generation game he's gonna be firing bow and arrows into the crowd (laughs) that's the team there it is Uh, you need to donate you need to donate that's an an idea for a pass that's great and then if you get hit you have to donate (laughs) (laughs) or if you you don't get yeah no we still need to iron those out the kinks yeah yeah yeah. Uh, Yeah, sure. i'm very keen for free play there's console and pc free Mm. play i love going to free play sections because you can just like Rock up, see what the, the person next to you is playing, and then like jump in and school them. Uh, play Halo at but, home. Play Halo at the convention. I mean, I'll take Halo <laughs> and then they wherever turn up I can and get. They're it. like, "What's this one called?" And they're like, "Halo." Never ha- heard hello. Of it. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's just such a welcoming game. Let it's called me give Halo. It a, you're okay. Uh, and boom. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm always keen for a bit of free play. I just always. think it's good. a great thing to have at a convention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good Society is the name of the Jane Austen tabletop RPG. Ah, Thank you. Uh, very cool. yeah, but like sure. the D&D thing, rare to be able to get lands ro- running these days in the same way that they used to in conventions like this are kind of some of the only places that you get to still do that and still kind of yeah. replicate totally. that trestle table vibe, which is, yeah, yeah very, very well, That's cool. the best thing part of, about gaming events. You go there to do stuff that you just can't do at home. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Which everyone says that. They're like, you play games at home. It's like, not in the same way. Mm. Totally. Like and it, yeah, and it's just it's nice for Sydney siders to have some more conventions yep. that bring each other together to rally around specifically video games. Yep. It's very also, cool. first year they're running it as well. Yeah. Specifically mm. this one. So, uh, yeah, hopefully the get comics get it. enough love. Yeah. You know, the comics have enough love. Give the game some love. Come on. Generation Games, exclamation mark Generation Games. Uh, check out the tickets. You might find a good ticket. There's early bird um, discounts right now and there's family tickets as well as uh, weekend tickets, both day tickets. So nice. make sure you check it out uh, because, yeah, it's the first one not to be missed. Also, they support us, so thanks. Mm. Well, yeah. Love yes. That. Thank them for us by buying tickets to their show. It's that easy. Hey, you. Yes, you. <laughs> hey, you. Yes, you. This is going to be confusing, but <laughs> stick with me if you can. St- stick with me. <laughs> this is going to be important. Uh, uh, cool. Yep. Awesome. Generation Games. Nice to see it. Uh, and it's also nice to see a little bit of backup. Oh, what a segue. What a throw. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's Peter this time. Ooh. Oh, oh my God. God. Lordy. There's that's... a Netflix documentary coming up about this murder. <laughs> true story. Spouse yeah. violence. That's yeah. true. Ooh. Terrifying. A mm-hmm. uh, little bit of backup over here. Hi, how are you going? Uh, is a segment <laughs> where we talk up. about. I want to focus on them hitting each other. It's cars. the clicking. It's the clicking. That's Me how now. cameras work. Me now. Back over here. Back over uh... here. A little bit of backup. You get close ups? Hey! Uh, a <laughs> little bit of backup is where we back things up and talk about a little bit of news, but not before we thank the sponsor of that segment. In this case, it's a little bit of Reese Wilde. Oh, back to the future. Back to the future. Back yeah. to the future. Love it. Oh, my uh, Lord. Love that and love a little bit of Reese Wilde because when we have a segment sponsored by Reese Wilde, we have a sound supplied by Reese Wilde. And that sound comes 
from the wild. We listen to said sound. We try and pick it. Is it an animal or is it a bush that he just rubbed with his hands? That's basically what this boils down to. Uh, we'll go around the room and see who, who thinks they have it first. Let's Josh, it. play that sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely furry convention. That sounds like Marge Simpson. <laughs> like, oh, se several Marge Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> it's get, a Marge Simpson can convention. Can we get one more time a little louder and now all I can picture is Marge Simpsons. Homie. <laughs> 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 I can't what? think straight now. <laughs> get to death with <laughs> That's so For me, it's like Marge pretending to be a pigeon. Yeah, that's okay. I like that. Yeah, yeah. that's not um, my guess. That's not my guess. You, do you want to go with just bird? Like, you reckon pigeon <sighs> birds? My guess is Marge Simpson. Okay. okay, I like that. It's dogs. It's not Marge Simpson. You reckon it's dogs? It's, it's yeah, but it's, it's dogs. dogs. The hell, they're dogs. Oh, oh. you know what sound a dog oh. makes? You basically murdered one today. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know the story. I'll do po show. Okay, <laughs> she lives. Um. <laughs> She's oh. fine. Oh. <laughs> I'll keep tough. making the sound to keep like, yeah. inspiring us. I was, oh. some, it's going to be some kind of wolves, small wolf, wolf puppies. It's not. But, yeah. Fox, no. Foxes make a screaming woman sound. Foxes sound ah. like people getting stabbed in the distance. Ah. Yeah. It's fucking terrifying. I'm going to say yeah. small, dogs, small dogs. Small dogs. I'm thinking baby birds, but oh, they, they, they would chirp. I don't know. I'll just say uh, pigeons stuck somewhere. Stuck pigeons. Yeah, stuck mm. pigeons. No, okay. Either. I mean, I am 100% sure about this. Wow. Sure. It is uh, a couple of furries dref dressed in oh, wolf, wolf outfits, and they're trying to be cute. I feel like we're in the home zone already. They're yiffing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a couple of yiffing furries. Oh, God. Damn. All right. Let's reveal uh, if there is a visual aspect the wild to this. Wins again. There is, yes. Thank you, Josh. Um, um, let's see what was making that wild noise. Oh. It was birds. It was, That's it was birds. It was they're birds. stuck on the ice. They're not, they're not, they're not pigeons. Um, That's a big pigeon. That's like a mallard of sorts. Yeah, it's a duck. It, it is. It's a sea duck. There's no something. way a they make that sound. That's something. You can't I, scientifically prove that. That's just that's putting... That's not a pigeon. You also can't just call it a sea duck. Yeah. Like ducks can land in the sea. No, no, there is a name. That's just the type of duck it is. Oh. oh okay. Oh. Oh, a pigeon is just oh. a rat oh. duck. That's oh. <laughs> true. All right, uh, there we go. We learned bravo, something. Bravo. Shane was closest, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, the point. that's stuck the point, at Shane. sea. Stuck at sea. Give Shane a point. <laughs> How's this show work? <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Reese, for sponsoring the segment and supplying us with that very confusing sound. Uh, all right, a little bit of backup. Uh, there was a new story today that we thought was reasonably interesting in the sense. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just it? underplay the whole. Uh, uh, this is... No, it was an interesting news story. Get comfortable, story. everyone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the US government has come out and they have rejected uh, the ESRB, who are the Entertainment mm. Software Ratings Board, who have uh, come up with an age estimate tool, or at least they've partnered with a, uh, a company who has the back end to create this, which is essentially facial recognition software uh, that they're trying to pitch can be used to identify the age of a gamer and therefore say, are they old enough to play the game or should they be, uh, you know, should the game uninstall itself because of this young child face using facial recognition. The uh, FD, not the FDA, the FTC, uh, with the Federal Trade Commission have come out and said, no. Nah, uh, and rightly so, because they've said, we've got camera software to film your children. Uh, and they've said, no, uh, we don't. Th we think this crosses lines. Uh, there's a lack of detail and descriptions of how this works. Uh, there's also the fact that the images are taken to a back end in a warehouse somewhere of young children on cameras. That's mm. never a good yeah. way to start it's like, things. It's, it's, seriously like, it's, it's so that we can protect the children by taking pictures of them Yeah, <laughs> so uh, like, oh, But no. it's, it's a very drastic step that has been rejected that is trying to solve a problem that has existed since the dawn of video games, mm. which is, hey, can you go in there and buy me a copy of GTA <laughs> yes. kind of vibe? So yeah. it's, it's heading, it, was, it was heading with good intentions in the right direction. Uh, it has been slapped back, but it hasn't been banned entirely. It's been mm. said, no, uh, go back to the drawing board and make this less creepy. Try less again. cameras. Yeah. 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 How do we feel about that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the obvious reaction, gross that they're taking photos of kids. We all feel like... It's not what the, the app isn't taking photos of kids. It is. It's, it's literally taking photos of yeah, kids. When you word it like that, of course it's going to get shot But that's why down. it's rejected. Okay. <laughs> that's the problem with that's it. That's the problem with not it. That they're not, it's, it's not a problem that they're trying to find a way for 13-year-olds to not get access to GTA. Yeah. That's fine. We have ratings, we have a classification board in Australia for that reason. 
and that's a good thing. Media should be age gated, age appropriate, and age appropriate. However, taking photos of kids is not the way to go about that. I also think it kind of just like it puts. It's trying to take the onus off like parents to be aware mm. of the that's stuff that point. their kids are playing, like. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's the, I understand that it gets difficult because, you know, you, you give a kid an iPad and they just have access to the internet and stuff like that. But, like, there's systems in place to be able to, like, you know, put codes on and things and stuff like that. And as a, as a parent, I feel like you – as a parent, I'm not a parent. But if you were a parent, you would – I would hope would want to be kind of like reasonably across the, the games your kids were playing, especially if they're that young. As a parent, I agree. As, as, <laughs> of a dog. <laughs> uh, there's, there's facial recognition attached to the credit card to buy the games that the kids shouldn't have. So right. already in one sense, there's a thing that the phone does or certain devices can do, which is Apple's back end or any other phone, I guess, not just Apple's that mm. has facial recognition on it. Yep. So are we, are we creeped out that it's attached specifically to a piece of software or a game and that is looking for a younger face versus just facial recognition in general we're okay with like kids can lock a phone with a face yeah i think it just goes a step too far in terms of like the parents and you know the, or the market consumers have the tools to decide what uh is appropriate and what you know parents might want their kids to be playing anyway so it's mm. like mm. i think you're right steph it's like why um put less responsibility on the parents if the parents are thinking oh don't worry the the phone will take care of it you know yeah. they'll it, recognize my kids i think that's it's yeah. going in the wrong direction if anything mm. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah totally yeah yeah, interesting. I feel like um, I feel like the kind of the facial recognition stuff is well, when you unlock your phone, it's it's not stored on a massive. It is absolutely somewhere. stored on an Apple. Really? Store somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the difference there is that there's there is an image there that's been saved for the adult to unlock the phone or whatever, or even a child. This this system would be actively looking with no basis at at a you know. Whether whether someone is young or old, yeah, I think mm. that's, that's the big point of difference between mm. using the phone. What, what about, about Paul, all the baby face adults? I was going to say, I shave this off. Yeah. Paul yeah. will suddenly yeah. I can't yeah. play Red Dead. It's like, how yeah. much Botox would I need to get to fool the system? Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but is fooling let the system? Oh, no, is fooling the system? I didn't get led into a game, and you're like, yeah, oh, thank yeah. you. And how is it trick the system? The kids draw a mustache on their face, and all of a sudden, yeah, you just cut out the face of an adult and look at it. It's like being carted at a pub. You're like, oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. Needed that. <laughs> yeah look, yeah. okay. Obviously, in that sense, it hasn't gone through, and it was. I don't. Yeah, were the intentions pure? Uh, like, I, I think there was probably if there's that much back end going on. Like, there's this company uh, Yoti, uh, mm. and it's an Epic owned software company. Super awesome. We're creating it in conjunction with each other. So, like, they were talking about applying this for other things, like not being able to access voice chat and things like like elements in the game as well, not mm. just locking you out and uninstalling the game. So I wonder if they're going to push this any further or are they going to try and find ways to use it as some kind of security system? We're getting to the point where catch, recatch things or whatever they are and all of that is like... like cap capture. Capture, thank yep. you. Oh, Recaptures. Yeah, yeah. They're all getting easier to fool by AI and by mm. all that kind of stuff. So maybe facial recognition, is that the is that They're the already next? too hard. Mm. <laughs> I did one the other day that was like... <laughs> <laughs> I did it like five times. You know what? I, I, am a robot. I couldn't read the question <laughs> properly, and it was like. I thought it was like find all the lions, but it was like choose the lions that are facing the right way up. Do you know what I read <laughs> recently? Maybe this is true, but apparently it's not just the actual clicking on the uh, fire hydrants and stuff. It's measuring your cursor speed there and oh. around. Uh, like it's taking the Google's oh. capture thing is actually taking that into account if more, if not the same amount as what you're actually clicking on because yeah, AI would be right. moving in a very robotic pattern. <laughs> robot sitting at the desk going, that's a, that's a traffic light. But yeah, so uh, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think it's just like, it's just another one. Of, it's just another example of technology being used to fix problems we don't have. Mm. and Problems we can't be bothered. And making life work. It's like, like the AI thing of going like, why is AI being used to generate art that is soulless? We wouldn't have a problem with AI if it was getting better at doing our laundry. Yeah. Or like mm. <laughs> doing mundane stuff. Yeah. There are so many much more bigger problems than <laughs> yeah. solving this. Like already we know that games don't cause violence amongst kids or any players for that matter. So the system's working? Like why do we need this? Yeah. 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 We just yeah. need better parenting, better responsibilities, better human element That's on top of this. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And disincentivizing good parenting is bad.
As a parent. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on Parent Corner. Yeah, exactly. How um, to get those nasty stains out of your kid's blazer. Imagine how angry and violent the kids get when they can't get into their games either. <laughs> when they get locked out because their face got wrecked. That's what it's going to cause. That's going to cause the kids to do a fatality. Yeah. 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 That's what they do, right? <laughs> uh, well, there we go. We'll see what happens with the future of facial recognition. Like Yodi. <laughs> <laughs> Yodi. Uh, and now we'll move on with uh, the games that we got into with our facial recognition because we're old enough. Josh, stay on that screen. Where did you put it? Where did you put it? Where did I put what? Don't, don't take a picture of me. Why are you doing that? Did you move this? I thought Pete was checking if Steph was a child or not. So yeah, she yeah, play yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, please. Uh... You can do the spiel. Welcome to the game plan. Yeah. No. Welcome to the. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do the you spiel. got this, Steph. What you been playing? There what it is. Like, yeah. This show is uh... live. Right? <laughs> and it's brought to us by. We'll, we'll pick it up. We'll pick it up. Yeah. She's fading away. <laughs> I, this this tweet um uh that I have of Nicrotex is um, in, uh, comes courtesy of me. What? What? Well. Uh, Nicrotex was helping me with some stuff the other day uh, in, um, related to my sound and mixer and stuff like that. And I was trying to figure out how I could route sound through my microphone. And uh, he suggested that I use download Winamp, which you also suggested to me the other day. Oh, hell yeah. Next tweet. It's 2002. I open Winamp. I load up Linkin Park's In the End. I open the visualizer and I full screen it. I realize it's actually 2024 and I am an aging millennial, which <laughs> the visualizer is almost immediately making me have a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> have a seat. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, recommends man. sitting down? Winamp, is, Winamp still rocks. And that it's tweet, got, and it's that got tweet skill. below it was my, my oh, Winamp skin. Yeah, the Sonic okay. one I always used to use Sonique. with like the green list and the yeah, click-throughs, yeah. all those horrendous skins. There was the one that was the head where the speakers came out the ears. Yeah. I yeah, loved yeah. it. Yeah. Same all the time. Oh, oh yeah. Napster. It was good. Um, it was good. And they still have all the classic skins and stuff on there, like the original. Something about a llama. It was like it the really llama, whips yeah. the llama's ass. <laughs> that, was that it? Whip, whips or kicks? Kicks the llama's ass, I, I think. Whips. I thought it was whips. Winamp. Yeah. Winamp. Yeah. Really Makes you feel old. Yeah. Still, yeah, good. still, still, still works. Still rocks. It's Speaking great. of asses, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was throwing to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I oh, like I get he, it. I, I thought he was playing a game <clears throat> about a donkey. <laughs> Peter, speaking of asses. Speaking of asses, Stellar Blade. <laughs> uh, the Stellar Blade demo is out now on PS5, free to access for anyone. Uh, the um, it is an action RPG uh, set in. Uh, a future science fiction setting of Earth. Human humanity has left the planet, have been driven off the planet by uh, nasty, uh, gross... Um, they're not aliens, but there is, there is species inhabiting the Earth. Uh, so we left. Now we've become super powerful out of the system and we're coming back to take it back. There are still some survivors on Earth, but uh, that is that is the setting for this science fiction setting, mm -hmm. uh, is, is that you are... A, a soldier sent back to Earth to try and reclaim it. Um, you just happen to be a soldier, not in any armor, um, <laughs> and and here you are. As and heels. A, uh, you are in heels for sure. Uh, it is a slashing action RPG. It definitely has a lot of souls in it. People are talking about it being a Souls like. It's got elements of that, um, but it definitely feels a lot like a, a more classic action RPG in the way that you put points into uh, skill trees and and choose m movement and combat abilities to kind of suit your play style as opposed to picking up weapons. You're locked as this character. Uh, so far, you I am locked with the weapons that I have and it's about becoming more proficient with the weapons that I have and the movement and abilities that I can use in combat. Um, the demo itself is about just shy of an hour you, I believe, are jumping in at the start of the game. It feels like a tutorial. Um, and it takes you to uh, kind of the first major boss fight of the game. Uh, you are running through uh, an apocalyptic kind of scenario with a crumbling city and a war waging. 
and uh, you're kind of poking your way through quiet town. It feels soulsy in how sparse everything is and it's just about the enemies that crawl out from behind rocks and shelters and crashed cars and stuff. Um, it has, like I think, all of the, the trappings of RPGs and particularly uh, uh, non-Western RPGs. This is a South Korean studio called Shift Up. Uh, this is the first... I believe it's the first... Um, uh, major console release they've had. They've had a lot of success on mobile, um, making other scantily clad <laughs> mobile fare. Um, and uh, yeah, they um, they uh, have <laughs> obviously found themselves in a little bit of controversy with how they've chosen to design this main character. Mm. And all of the soldiers are just sexy women. Um, and, you know, it... it runs into some of the uh, some similar problems that people have had with Bayonetta in that it's like a, a, it is an absurd outfit for the scenario that they're in uh and also uh it's uh, quite overtly sexualized to the point where you can take your armor off and then you're just a nude version of yourself like it's all right but what's well, no, but, nip, but, no no but, nipples or but like sailor moon but, style sort of but, that's, what's, like what's the law behind that though? there's a reason right mm. Well, they, they are augmented humans, but they are human beings mm -hmm. and they have, they, they've been augmented to be able to combat the way that they combat. Uh, they're augmented. <laughs> you, sound, you sound like the scientist who made them. Uh, they're augmented. And I've they augmented, have to have, combat I've the augmented all, the, combat. all the right parts. So why, so why, would, clothes so why would you take the clothes off? So they can combat. So you can perv on them. This, uh, to, uh, this but, the, but there's always a reason in the, like in in the, the world. No, no, no. Like, no, no, like, like quiet breeds to her skin. No, no, there's not a reason. Yeah. There's not a reason. They like, I mean, this this studio uh, shift up. Uh, they're a South Korean studio, um, and this is obviously a very uh, Japanese role playing game in its design and mm. in, in the way that the story is kind of the story beats are playing out. I, I am not enjoying the story at all, uh, but um, the the mechanics of it are great. And, and <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, uh, sorry, what are you enjoying? <laughs> and I'm also I'm enjoying. Uh, I'm Let's enjoying, be honest, we're not playing it for the story. The, the jiggle, fi the jiggle physics. Uh, I did, I did, I was curious because I remember a big part of the conversation about Bayonetta, and I don't really enjoy Platinum Games' style of games. Mm. I much prefer this. Yeah, okay. This is really fun to play. This isn't overtly over the top, kind of like floating, juggling, hacking, uh, like no. slash pure action, Devil May Cry. Yeah, style. as you said, yeah. more soulsy yeah. in the sense that you know you're grounded. She keeps getting up, going, "Oh, I'm wounded. Put some bloody armor on." I know. Sorry, the, the character, the character really sucks. Um, <laughs> but I, I also I, I appreciate that hair physics have come a long way, but I find it incredibly annoying. Put it, <laughs> the put the, the hair is the Super only long, thing stopping you from ponytail. just looking at butt. <laughs> it's it's ultra violent as well like there's decapitation yeah. and limbs come and flying everywhere uh, but you were uh, saying yeah like bayonetta. so so Bay yeah i, I mean uh, there was a similar conversation around bayonetta and how it was like uh, overtly sexualized and there were questions about was there a single woman on the development team at platinum when that game was made uh, and the answer was no <laughs> um and i was like i wonder if and i you know this is uh like very base level investigation but i I found some people who work at the studio on LinkedIn. The project manager for this game is a woman. Uh, facial animation and character animators, women. Um, and Eve, this character, the body is an actual scan of a South Korean model. Yep. So it's not like they've gone to uh, design something. I mean, it's, it's not... <laughs> entirely through the male it's gaze. not it's entirely like, yeah. unrealistic because it is based on reality but it is also absurd there's also um, the thing with bayonetta was often the like the, from the first game it's like it's empowering to women and as you point out it's like are there any women working in the yeah. uh behind which, this which woman was empowered by this exactly mm -hmm. versus this at least comes out on the front foot with that as part of the development i think most people look back oh. on bayonetta very f fondly is what, what i'm trying to where say it's is gone like, and where that character's well, I think, evolved yeah. into. I think yeah. Yeah. so was, stylish it, as well. bayonetta was yeah. very campy you know what i mean i think it kind yeah. of like it, it it kind of got around that conversation a little bit with just it, it's very campy attitude towards every character is wild yeah. and weird she's just yeah, yeah. The, the sexiest in it whereas here yeah. you've got this, it, this, there's a little bit of gritty realism and as you said the violence in this yeah. uh, and all that I just want to ask quickly about like I was intrigued by the original trailer for this because it looks graphically it's incredible like it looks really ambitious and one of the bit of polished games on PS5 in terms of the scale of the worlds and stuff as well you probably don't see it in the demo, but I, is there open worldness to it? Is there like hub zones? Is it just not in the levels? demo? It's it's really it's quite linear, like sure. Souls One linear. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
and and in this demo again it's very tutorialized this this whole opening hour uh it doesn't feel like there are multiple paths you, you can go down and uh it it's driving you to to a point but at the end of the demo you're kind of at introduced to a hub in this city so it might there was you, just a bit of that in the trailer. It, I was you, really intrigued by that. Mm, it looked yeah. really cool, and yeah. it looked like there'd be downtime in between missions. And like, I like world building where it where it <laughs> it stretches a pretty long bow to be like, all right, explain all of this. <laughs> like, yes, it's very stylish, sexy, strange, and different. Now try and tell me this is try and have a serious cutscene in all of this. I, yeah. I appreciate developers having to try and act as serious as they pretend their games are. Sometimes, <laughs> so yeah. I want to see that. Bajo was in chat and just asked if I was criticizing Dark Souls One. Absolutely not. Not at all. I th I th Dark Souls One is a perfect linear game. Uh, well, I mean, it's it, it's not super linear at later stages. You you know, it's more Metroidvania -y in how you kind of reconnect to things. But uh, no, this this just opening hour feels like souls one where you are like i'm going up those stairs and that's mm. the way i have to go it, it also is not nearly as punishing as dark souls and there sure. are difficulty settings so i think i like the like that we have a version of like a souls like that's not the reason i get turned off dark souls and like bloodborne is everything's wet and gross and yeah. disgusting i was like i just don't want to be yeah. in this world yeah totally. she's literally was... just sat down on a rainy broken <laughs> lawn chair but yeah i get to but look well, who's sitting on it Gus. yeah that's true <laughs> uh yeah there, this, maybe there's a little bit more of this is closer to um is it the sur surge or what am i thinking of I know, other, yeah. Yeah, yeah the other sci-fi sort of yeah, yeah a little bit more of that mm. i'm i just i occasionally as i said i like diving into a really absurd uh, story and game and I've been a bit jealous of everyone playing Final Fantasy currently because mm. I just do not have the mental scape to get into that but I'm like I want to get into this maybe I just mm. want to like dive into this and pretend like just see where this story goes I, progress carries I think right the, progress progress the will demo, carry yeah. from this demo across but again like with this kind of game you wouldn't necessarily have a problem playing the first hour again sure. because you just it warms you into the controls mm. yep. um, comparing this to Rise of the Ronin that I played recently as well I think they both sit next to each other as having similar feels. I think this feels way more crafted because it's not that open world setting, where, which felt a bit loose in Rise of the Ronin. But I did, I think I enjoyed the combat more in Rise of the Ronin because it feels like, you know, uh, uh, Ninja Theory have honed. Ninja Theory? No. Uh, Neo developers are. Uh, ni uh, uh, Team Ninja. Team Ninja, Team Ninja yeah. have. have Done, have iterated on that combat system through a bunch of games now and it feels really really good uh it was just the the rest of the that package that i wasn't necessarily in for the whole ride for um people like the time period said it was reasonably unique for a historical game but again i want to know i want weird and mm. like strange and well this, this is, is absolutely weird and yeah. and the boss fights in this are reminiscent of souls because they're monsters yeah, and cool. it's about and it's all about telegraphing and i mean it's actually a little bit more secure in how much focus there is on uh parry and timing of parry windows and then the opportunity to do like devastating damage when you break their poise by parrying well so um yeah it, it's it's very cool and i think it's like i think it's a really important release for playstation because i think it will score quite well um and also it's just it's going to be one of those like games for PlayStation that they can put on a pedestal and go, we yeah. have this exclusively. <clears throat> it uh, It's like nothing else out there, even though it's like a lot of other things out there, but it does enough to, to kind of stand apart and um new ip new character as weird or as lackluster as the story is like it's different and new, well yeah i mean i haven't original. seen enough of the story to say the story's not worth telling it's just it's got all of the already got all of the shit that i hate like it just <laughs> yeah it's just whiny crappy dialogue about nothing <laughs> like ugh. it's so self-important in such a and, but it's not it knows it's a joke but it's never written as a joke sure. and it just it, uh, tonally never works for me that jrpg style of writing yeah. um but uh it's cool it's very cool game feel Just put some put some armor on put your hair in a bun there's no Practical. armor uh there i mean there are mo more reasonable clothes like that are not as <laughs> you have unlocked reasonable clothes yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but there, but of course there is nude setting right from what from the, go, from so. the get go yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. whole yeah. game nude yeah. amazing all okay. right uh, sure. i will go next uh i played uh open roads this week which is um a interactive story game, like an interactive narrative game. 
I would say the closest comparison to this would be Gone Home in that it um, presents itself as a kind of like a mystery, but um, is really uh, at its core about the character relationship, specifically the relationship between this mother and daughter who um, are uh, packing up their house, getting ready to move because um, they're sort of having some financial issues. Uh, her mother's mother, so the main character's grandmother, just passed away from um, dementia and um, she was an advice columnist uh, in her sort of former life. And so she has a sort of long legacy of giving advice to people. And they sort of, as you go through the house, you pick up all of these little different memories and things and um, some of the examples of her work and stuff like that. Then you start to sort of get a sense that maybe, um, maybe grandmother, grandmother had a secret life and maybe a secret relationship. <laughs> so you and your mother kind of embark on a journey to go and find out about, uh, uh, some mystery, a mystery man that sort of pops up in some of her belongings and stuff like that. Some. Yeah, yeah, and um, it, it kind of becomes a bit of a comment on like the people in your life that you 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 think that you you sort of life is simple because you think of your grandparents a certain way, and it's like everyone has kind of complex layers to their relationship, and um, you know the lives that they led were maybe not what you thought they were, and it doesn't necessarily have to be all bad, but it's just. Yeah, it kind of, it presents a, a, a mystery and then um, goes about solving it as these two characters go on this journey together. It's really nice. All of the, um, I would say the biggest sort of hero of this game is the voice acting is really good and the art I just loved. The art reminded me a little bit of like kind of a early 90s cartoon or something like that. It's just um, really kind of emotive and lovely and I like that kind of sort of classic cell shady style um, and it just lends itself to this genre of story really well. I think it's set in about 2002 or something. Um, so it's got a little bit of, um, you know, music and kind of callbacks to that sort of specific time period as well. And then um, all of the kind of objects that you pick up as you're looking around through games, because I love games like this where you're just rifling through someone's belongings, <laughs> trying to figure out a bit more about them. Because <laughs> it's just, it plays into that thing of like things you can't do in real life, um, but would really love to be able to do. Um, and uh, every oh. single item is designed so beautifully and you can mm. pick up just about everything in the game maybe like a handful of things in a room will be relevant, but you can pick up everything. Mm. At one point I kept on seeing this like Macca's cup. It wasn't Macca's, but you know what I mean? It was like a Macca's cup. There was like one on the table, there was one on the bin and I picked up every single one and I looked at it. And then after a while I got an achievement being like, why do you keep picking that? <laughs> <laughs> Stop looking at cups. Yeah, that one was in the trash, like leave it in there. <laughs> Oh, who's going to be this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my so Lord. So, um, yeah, it's really, really beautifully done. It's well made and um, it's not long. I would say it's about two or three hours, I think, total. Oh, love that. <laughs> so you will I mean, be, unless you want to pick seated. up every car. You'll be seated for two or three hours. And you can uh, yeah, yeah. Do you hit the road or you, do you, you hang out in an attic? You do, <laughs> no. You, um, uh, is you, uh, you kind of move through all the different rooms of the house to start with because you're packing up the house. And then once you kind of hit the attic, then you're... um you're out in this investigation. So yeah, yeah. Um, you spend some time in the car and then you stop at a motel. And then, um, I mean, I won't sort of say. How's the voice acting? Cause it was, uh, I remember this, it was announced Caitlin Deaver mm -hmm. and uh, Carrie Russell. Yeah. As mother and daughter. Oh, I didn't know it was Carrie Russell. Yeah. yeah um, the, the voice acting was good. I really liked it. It's um, the only thing is just that it's um, <laughs> when you're kind of going through the, the house belongings and stuff like that, every time you find something significant, it, there's a prompt to call mum and then she just appears. <laughs> and sometimes there'd be several things in a, in a suitcase that I was looking through and each one of them was call mum and then she'd just come back again. And I'd be like, just let her stay there. Like, yeah, you're allowed like, to stay mum. You're allowed to we stay. We can hang out. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's really, it's really beautifully made and it's, it's difficult to talk about these games because it's obviously plot heavy and I can't, I don't want to give away the whole plot, but um, it's, it's worth playing for sure. Can I ask, was grandmother robbed was she hiding state secrets or something in the cia came why is the house so fucking trashed like there's chairs tipped over and stuff well because they're moving house and i think they want oh this house here yeah oh like what happened the shelf got knocked off the wall this looks like this house hasn't been lived in in a while so the grand they they came and knocked this on grandma's a, door and they actually really body. insensitive the grandmother she, died. she had dementia right she was stumbling. the grandmother was yeah, living yeah. with them because she had dementia so she and she's passed away this is a different house that they've mm, gone on a mm. road trip to, to as part back of their investigation. To, back to Nan's yeah. house. Yeah. Okay. I've got to say, the 2D art style, like characters against 3D background, like really mm. striking. It's, it's cool. It's also interesting. It's got like the, um, when you said 90s, it almost has that like 
I want to say like 70s, 80s, Ralph Batchy, I think of uh, who used to do like uh, Cool World and all those like old ones where they used to film people and then draw over them oh, cell yeah, by yeah. cell and have that like ultra weird uncanny valley animation, but mm. like even out of focus when they punch in it and stuff like that. It's cool. There was it's, an Incubus music video that was like that. Yeah, right. It's like it's got a few extra frames in it that you wouldn't do if you're an animator, mm. but if you're following action, you get this weird kind of like vibe sure, to it which, yeah. it, which is a cool look. And yeah, over the 3D as well, often all that stuff was put over background plates or real life footage mm. so you have this weird yeah. contrast but cool yeah. art style and it's yeah. nicely done they don't animate all of the like speech and stuff like that but they animate it enough to kind of give it um you know sort of personality and um you know a decent amount of emotion when when they're talking to each other so i love that good. you love these games because i really struggle with games that want me to look around for stuff and have just red herrings and nothing around like the cups would have driven me mad i would have just given up and been like no i need it I need a Ubisoft star marker on the phone. <laughs> after, I, after I get three things that are wrong, I need it to be like, it was this thing over here. I think it depends on how intuitive, like the um, the sort of the, the grabbing and. I thought you were going to say how intuitive you are. No. <laughs> like, not very. <Mary. laughs> Gra- the sort of grabbing mechanic and looking yeah, at stuff. Like this, got... is, this is all super easy to just like grab things and look at them and put them back down. And it's not like yeah. a. You know, some games have a really laboured like animation. And, yeah. To yeah, put yeah, it back yeah, down. Yeah. You're like, oh, God. No, yeah. this is just like you grab it, you put it away. You grab it, you put it away. You can just look at whatever you want. All I know the 3D is. The environment's stunning. Like the fidelity of it all. It's like, you know, yeah, for an indie game, it's. It's great. Really all I know is that when I have kids I'm just gonna have get photos printed and just write a lot of stuff on the back of photos because all yeah. I want people doing is oh, yeah the but map. you need to oh. write something really cryptic yeah mm. yeah yeah the, the sun I ne- I wish I had oh <laughs> <laughs> and game pass as well I think someone said game pass yeah. for this yeah. one yeah. amazing yeah, yeah. yeah. nice one yeah so uh that's uh open roads and Shane Yes. Tell us a little bit about what you've been playing. I've been playing a 2021 game that's now, well, first came to Switch and PC, now is on everything, I'm pretty sure, called The Legend of Tian Ding, which is a 2D platform beat em up oh, that's actually this. based on like a like this real character, Liao Tian, Tian Ding, who is described as like Taiwanese Robin Hood oh. slash Zorro. And uh, it's awesome. I wanted to bring it, I finished it last year, but I've gone back to it because I just can't stop thinking about how awesome this game is. And I feel like no one's talking about it. Um, it's a yeah, 2D platform action game. Um, you're playing Tiang Ding, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, where Taiwan was occupied by Japanese forces. Um, and you're essentially, yeah, like you know, robbing from the rich to, to support the poor, um, trying to overthrow this, you know, oppressive regime. The Japanese police forces sort of come in to town and taken over everything. Uh, there's a bit of mystery there, a bit of conspiracy as well. Um, a lot of like, you know, backstabbing and just great, great storytelling. Um, you can see like the art style is very comic book and the cutscenes, if you will, are presented in that comic book panel style mm-hmm. as well. Really striking, really stylish. And just a game I thoroughly enjoy that I wanted to bring up on the show today. Um, if you like uh, games that demand of you, like, you know, 2D action games, like not oh, Metroidvania sometimes, but even just Prince of Persia, um, Prince of Persia style, exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, have you thinking, you know, the combat is really simple. You're just using like, you know, X for basic dagger attacks. You're using Y, which is like a red sash to, um, once you uh, weaken enemies enough, you'll hook around them and then steal their weapons. But you'll also be able to like push and pull and throw them in certain directions. Um, so then you steal their weapons and use it against them. But you're also mindful of the fact that there are enemies over here who are throwing things at you, or there's an enemy who's about to charge. And you also have a grappling hook. Who doesn't have a grappling hook? So nice. you're getting <laughs> high to, you know, slam down on enemies. It's just really fun kinetic action that i feel like was over missed because i just i didn't hear anyone talk about this game and when i played it, i was like this is fucking awesome like yeah, more people need to play this one so yeah Le- legend of tian ding it's on uh you can see xbox playstation switch as well uh, i think it's on ios now also i don't know how well that version of the mm. game would run but um yeah i'd say probably i'd have to look at how long to beat but i think i finished it in probably six to eight maybe ten hours uh and uh adds like as the game progresses, you feel like, I feel like it's got that sort of flow and rhythm like a Batman Arkham game where um, you're constantly surprised by the new gadget or weapon you get and it sort right. of unlocks a different element to mm. the combat flow. So that part is really, really rewarding. Um, yeah, if you like this type of game, do not pass this one up because it is it is awesome. I saw this, yeah, quite a while back and thought like, oh, this definitely is up my alley in terms of, uh, yeah, the 2D brawler. But I did notice the combat and we're seeing some level-based stuff here, like mm. some just maze 
sewer levels the best ever. Yep. Uh, but there was some really cool uh, stuff later on or, uh, that is this like uh, choreographed like action scenes in like hotel lobbies and tr jumping mm. in like in the the streets of the city where yep. there's like multiple characters all fighting you from different areas. It looks like a martial arts film, like mm. the yeah, way that cool. combat when you're juggling multiple enemies and stuff like that. I, I will say I was thrown a little bit while I saw it. And I was like, okay, title kind of threw me. I was like, okay, I don't quite understand that. And then I looked at the trailer and it was like, oh, okay, so it's set during this really specific time in history yeah. and you don't need to know this and you'll probably learn from playing. Definitely. But yeah. I was, I don't want to say I was dissuaded from seeing that, but I was like, I don't know anything about this. I'm not sure I'm like... Whereas you're able... well versed in all the princes of Persia. Of course, all the Persian princes. <laughs> I'm you know up to them all. But, and so I was intrigued, but I, I, I'm upset that I didn't follow through because I do want to play this because it was like... I couldn't tell if it was a... No, what I'm saying is I couldn't tell if it I was like an ancient... I don't understand it, and therefore I don't like it. <laughs> well, what I said, I, I wasn't quite sure if it was a, like, martial arts-focused game or it was a, sh a side-scrolling sure. shooter right, or yeah. it was a platformer. And it was kind of like the trailer was like, it's all of these things. Yeah. And I was like, well, that can't be good. Yeah, they, like, had so, yeah, ah, they had so much variety in enemy types. So you can see there, you know, enemies with weapons and you're being mindful of when they're going to shoot and yep. guys with shields. So you always... You, it forces you or requires you to use all the techniques that you use. And I find that to be so satisfying. Like Ori, Will of the Wisps and mm. Blind Forest, they're some of my favorite games because you're always a... thinking about what your next move is. There's no Metroidvania-ness to this, is there? No, it's no. It looks level-based I mean, and like story-based. Like, it's side-scrolling and you'll revisit certain areas of town to like, you know, meet up with different characters and trigger different missions. But yeah. uh, no, you're not sort of um, worried too much about, oh, I can't access that area yet because I don't have this ability. Bit there might be a bit of that. Yeah. There's a bit of the, you know, <laughs> hidden stuff behind dark walls that you unlock certain things. You'll get different uh, amulets and that sort of thing. They'll give you different passive abilities. So there's a bit of... You're, you're always progressing and add, adding new um, things to your repertoire. It had, it had kind of like, again, I'm sorry if I'm just like whitewashing this, but it has like a sort of Tintin, Indiana Jones, like that sort of era hero that right. again, didn't know anything about the character. And I was like, it's just a really cool era and a really cool setting. And again, the trailer was like, it's got a bit of everything in it. It's like, it, for one minute, it looked like a Streets of Rage brawler. Then it looked like a, a hardcore platformer. Yeah. Then it looked like it was a, yeah, a sort of um, Contra style shooter. And I was just like, wow. Bloody ambitious. Uh, and obviously, like, good fun as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Are those bad recommend. I always like games yeah, like where someone yeah. <laughs> takes a bunch of things up from their favorite games and is like, I can, mm. I can fit this all in one, right? And then it's, like, totally successful. Yeah, I think the developers are inspired by the likes of, like, Shank. I'm a Shank. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shank. And, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, there was a couple of others that they cited as well. But... When they go hard on some of the animations as well, mm. like, oh, you're, like, you're back flip kick is going to have like 50 cells of animation. Yeah. You're like, wow, that was glossy. It, like, that looked cool. Conveyor belt 2D <laughs> combat is like, it's giving me anxiety. Like, I remember <laughs> doing this back in the day and being like, <gasps> mm -hmm. it's so stressful. <laughs> yeah, it's weirdly it's weirdly retro and like got really nice modern flares mm. of flourishes to it as well. Yeah. But I just want those games I wanted to spotlight. You know, it's like new IP from Neon Doctrine, very small, I think Southeast Asian based publisher. Um, I, I need, sorry, I need to look up the name of the developer. It's so funny. It's CGCG, which stands for... I'll come back to that. I don't think it was Game Pass, but it's definitely... It was Game Pass it, at one point. It was, okay. yeah, okay, yeah. right. Yeah, cool. Which stands for Creative Games and Computer Graphics. Just I mean, greatest well, it does I mean, what it says on the tin. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I love that you can kick You lasers. can kick bullets. Yeah. That's uh, like the animation's so beautiful. I noticed, like, the first one I noticed was when you're on the edge of falling off something and you know that that animation of oh am i yeah. gonna fall just one of those and it's like that's is so the last thing I like, is the story pulpy in a fun way as well or is it does it take itself seriously no oh, it's it's twists and turns i i don't know how sort of um uh historically accurate it is um well, you can kick bullets <laughs> yes, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh but uh no there's that it was gripping i'll, I'll okay. say that much yeah cool yeah nice. great nice all right Gus, bring up the rear. Sure thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm back into a game because there was some DLC for it. Splatoon 3, funnily enough, uh, yeah. had its second and final half of the DLC that it launched back in, I'm going to say, late Feb, um, which I didn't play at the time, but I've come back to. Uh, there, the DLC was awkwardly structured into two halves. You had to pay for the season pass for the one piece of DLC that was split into two halves. The first half was not deals, was not anything. It was the ability to go back to the hub zone of the first platoon and just mm. walk around. Mm. And it was met with a lot of people going, what? This I'm paying for this and something else. This is the something else. This is called Side Order. And uh, it is a roguelike mode that has been added to uh, the third game. 
and it is essentially boils down to a tower ascension uh, mode uh, of which you take multiple runs to complete. Your character finds himself in this really cool uh, new setting. And again, I, I will try to keep uh, the waxing lyrical about how much I love the art style of the Splatoon games to a minimum. But essentially what they've done here is created a world which is to do with one of the earlier Splatfests. Now, Splatfests, if you didn't know, were these little... Um, these haven't finished yet. Uh, Splatfests were these little uh, voting uh, games that they used to play in Splatoon 1 and 2 and in 3 subsequently, which were just absolutely pointless, uh, meaningless things where they're like, hey, ketchup or mustard? And you're like, ketchup, of course. And everyone votes, and then they count all everyone's votes, and you get T-shirts, and everyone running around the hub zone going, ketchup, ketchup, mustard. And at the end of it, they're like ketchup wins and you get some points and then the next few weeks later they come up with another splat fest they were pointless and silly and feels like we didn't need the context well here we go it's the reason <laughs> one of the early ones they had was control versus chaos uh and in control versus chaos they were like do you like the crazy wackiness of the splatoon kind of universe or do you like control do you mm -hmm. like things being ordered systematically put together and chaos obviously won because people love that style mm -hmm. in the splatoon uh universe what they've done here is made a spin-off if hypothetically control had won. So what you enter you end up entering oh. is a fictional version of the Splatoon universe that uh, and it actually turns out to be kind of like a VR simulation of what would happen if control took over. And that's why everything is this kind of like muted pastel palette of mm. like soft tones and all this kind of stuff. And again, it's window dressing, but it's just and it's unnecessary, but it's wonderful that it's there. I so don't essentially so what was the ketchup mustard one then? That was, that was just them starting their little vote example. system. Um, and, and it was just something that became synonymous with Splatoon. But this is them using that as a jumping off point. It sounds like it, it, went, it took a turn. It was just like ketchup or mustard. And then they were like, democracy or dictatorship. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Real I think there were a few in between as yeah. well. Uh, and they're still running the Splatfest. But again, I love that they use that as a jumping off point as the framework for what this is. Um, which again is your character finds themselves in this kind of strange virtual reality simulation uh, where a couple of the characters from the first Splatoon, Marie and the other one who are the DJs... Uh, are An Anthony. Anthony are trapped in this universe. Uh, you find yourself there and uh, your goal is to ascend this elevator through this virtual tower of 30 levels to free uh, one of the characters from the top. In doing so, you, uh, you are taking on little chambers, little uh, challenge rooms that all have an assortment of variables, be it the enemy types, be it the goal that you're undertaking. And as you go into each of these stages, you will fill out uh, a, a color palette, which is essentially a big sort of scando looking synthesizer full of, uh, full of slots that you'll drop a color into. That color is tied to a bonus and you'll get to pick your bonus before you go into that chamber. So depending on which cha uh, challenge you pick here, you will uh, then take that into the run. So it'll be like, hey, you could do more damage with your ink or you can get better range yeah, or sure. you can do poison damage mm. with the ink you leave behind. But depending on which one you pick, that will depend on how difficult the chamber you're going to do is. And as you complete these and collect them and fill them out in your little uh, switchboard here, you'll fill up that whole board with colors. And if you tend to go with one style of modifier, like damage increasing, which are all like pink and red, your character will slowly start to glow that color. So it's a cool little stylistic yeah. choice that goes, hey, here are the options that you're adding heaps of compound bonuses onto your character. They all do multipliers, they add up, and then hopefully you can take that all the way to the top of the tower. If you don't, and you do die, and I've died quite a few times. I thought this might have been a cakewalk. I've found it a lot harder than I thought. When you do get ejected from the tower and fail your run, you cash in all those color Dulux swatches or whatever you want to call them. Mm. You cash them all in for a currency and you use that currency to buy permanent upgrades for your next run. Mm, yep. So basically the further you go... And the more of them you collect before dying, the more currency you have to buy your upgrades. And it's all done in a slightly confusing way. They're called pearls and you're hacking and the system and all this kind of stuff. But what it does boil down to is that when you finish a run, you've got a lot of currency to go back in and do another run, which is great for these kind of modes because mm. you do go, damn it, I need to go back in. Mm. Um, and in that sense, it, I, I really think it's good. I think it's great value. These are the gelatins the, the that are like skeletons of fish in black jelly that uh, are basically yeah. swarming you. So the enemy types yeah. are a bit more like the salmon run. 
um, from the uh, the wave mode versus your traditional just Splatoon versus mode. Uh, yeah, versus like your Splatfest yeah. standard. And fair. there are some really creative little modes to these challenges. They're like destroy the portals, cover areas in ink, uh, catch the really fast enemies, move balls into uh, certain... Um, you've got to like sink balls in, eight balls in little... Uh, pockets. Pockets, thank you. Um, and so the way they mix up with the difficulty sliders and all that kind of stuff is the variation that I love in a mode like this, which mm. keeps me coming back. Yeah. That was um, going to be my first question. Is there enough variety, like, you know, chamber to chamber? I think that's the point, is that they've got enough variables yeah. between the enemy types, the modifiers you get, and mm. the difficulty of mm. those. And there are so many of them um, that, yeah, I don't really feel like I've done the same one twice. I'll always take a rogue light over a rogue like as well. Like... I'll never remember what the difference is. Well, so this being that you can get permanent upgrades. That's light. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It just it just means that there's an end in sight. Mm -hmm. Rogue like which is makes, like you, you go back to nothing. Square every time one, nothing. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep, yep. Which makes the variety <laughs> of the thing it makes jumping back in for another run more enticing because you are going to get something out of it ultimately. Yeah. You don't need to finish it now, but you know you will yeah. eventually. The and promise of maybe just being able to get a bit further this time. And then well, they're, actually, they're quite yeah. good because some of them are just like extra lives on your run. Mm. Some of them are you'll get more money from cashing in your coloured things when you come back. So some of them are long-term long progression and some of them are just like just do more, have more armor all the time. So there's short-term bonuses and long-term ones. But um, that entire yeah. mechanic makes it sound like the Doom mobile game to me. Oh yeah, that you had know, a similar kind of thing. You choose like weapon upgrades, but then when you die, you can upgrade your weapons and other stuff. I played a bit of, of that. that. What was it called? Yeah, what was that? Doom, I think it's Doom Eternal or something. Yeah, um, but yeah, because yeah, before before the start of every level, you would choose Mighty um, Doom. Mighty, Mighty Doom. Doom. Mighty Doom. Mighty yep. Doom. Um, but again, this is this is the substantial piece of DLC. And um, the, the final thing I'll say is that I don't know why I love it, but I love the chaos of the design, of like, which is, I guess, ironic to what I said before about the Splatfest, but the absolute madness of the palette of how these guys make these characters. Like, it's fucking weird. Like, yeah. you land there and one of the characters has turned into that hover robot. You, you make these weird, stylish, strange squid people in the elevator who are just in there and like neon stuff being like, yo, dude, you trying to get to the top as well? You're like, what is this? The <laughs> music is crazy. The design in the control of this is like, has this cool like sort of Japanese uh, like Scando-esque mix of like symbols and uh, cool aesthetic design around it all. And then the best part about it is, uh, and I have seen how, where this goes near the end, is that, and they did this with the last DLC, uh, the uh, the Subway Squid one from uh, Splatoon 2. There's actually, this is like really nice story. The Tigger shows his wife, doesn't it? <laughs> this is Shut a great, up, Tigger show. Shut up, man. He this can talk a, about whatever he wants. This is, a great, this is a great fucking mode to a great fucking game. And then, Check and it out. Every time he says Splatfest, it makes me giggle. <laughs> <laughs> That's why uh, I'm a I'm a squid kid. Um, yeah, the end the, the ending of the last DLC and this one as well is just so in love with itself. It's really quite charming. Like mm. I do find something wonderful about how much law they inject into this, but how much how self serious all the characters take mm. that law, and then the music on top of that when they like bit have the big crescendo of the end of the <laughs> DLC. I've kind of seen it, spoiler, and I was like, I really want to get to the end of this. Uh, and it's nice to have a comeback to game on my Switch. That's mm. just like, yep. I've, I don't want to go back and play the multiplayer. I suck at it. People are too good at it now. Mm. The servers aren't as active as I think they yeah, were. Yeah. Salmon runs good fun, but now this is up there as one of my favorite modes in the Splatoon series, and I hope it. Uh, I hope it's in the next one. They're going to make another one. I'm sure they are. Sure. If one dies, they make another one. That's how Splatoon goes on. In yeah, life. I mean, I, I think it's been such a su success for uh, Nintendo that we're likely to see one on the next platform. Yeah, Switch totally. Yeah. But, uh, free DLC? Hey. No, it is, I think, around 25 bucks okay. for that plus plus the ability to revisit the first lobby in the Hello. first game, which is just wow. so lame. You just go there, you're like, a little party goes, oh, yeah, I remember Splatoon 1. It's like, can you do anything here? It's like, nah, you can talk to some Was vendors. Was Splatoon 1 the city? They've all been little, cities. Oh, it's like a like, museum pass, essentially. It kind it's of just, is. Yeah. It's like, remember when it was really good back in the first one? Yeah. Anyway. Enjoy that. Remember how this isn't backwards compatible? Enjoy. <laughs> uh, yeah, there that is nice. Side Order. The side DLC. Side Order DLC. Yep. And Peter played... Stella. Stella! Stella! Played. I played Open Roads. Shane played... Good luck. The Legend of Tianding. The Legend of Tianding. And you played... 
I just said Side it. order. Side order. <laughs> and I played. <laughs> you played Stella. <laughs> exactly. That was what we've been playing. Do 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 do. I hit it. Always oh, wowsy. Oh, where's a wowsy? Days. <laughs> a rousing rallying hello, worldy fans! In today's adventure, be on the lookout for some denim ducking behind a car, a pocket peeking out of a tree, and of course, where would we be without our titular hero himself, Wolsey? I think he's disappeared somewhere on Ligon Street, Melbourne. Can you help us find him? He's there somewhere, folks, but where? Time's almost up. Have you found him? There he is, cheeky Wolsey. Until next time, Wolsey superfans. Now, here's Wonder Wolsey. Always oh, Wolsey. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, they're cancer researchers because not all heroes wear capes. And these researchers work tirelessly every single day to find a cure for this terrible disease. I am teaming up and raising money again this year to do my part and ban cancer for good. Fundraise between April 1st and May 31st to unlock some awesome rewards from some of Game On Cancer's charity partners, as well as your own personalized superhero streamers jacket. It actually suits with the polo. You could join the team that I'm a captain of, Team Cancer Kickers. Like mine, Team Komomo. Or you can fundraise solo, but no matter how you do it, you'll be helping kickstart bright new ideas to cure cancer. So all that's left to do is sign up on Tiltify, join the Game on Cancer Discord, and help the superhero streamers kick cancer's butt one donation at a time. Welcome back to Back Pocket, everyone. We just saw a word from Dump Days. Pocketeers, you love to see it. Uh, we saw Wolsey's ad. Did many of you spot where Wolsey was hiding? Did you find him? <laughs> <laughs> God, I uh, and we saw uh, that the uh, Game On Cancer Superhero Streamers campaign That's has it. begun. It has begun running April 1st to May 31st. Uh, I saw Liz Dahlia. In the chat has signed up. Thank you so much, Liz hey. Dahlia, for your ongoing support. Why hasn't anyone else signed up? That's it. That's why they you're must... here to guilt people exactly. into signing up. They must all like cancer. Liz, which is oh man, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to go there. But I sure, mean, if, it's uh, pointing. That's yeah. the message. That's been We've always thought we had a generous audience, but we didn't know we had a cancer. Snail, audience. Snail XD in the chat. <laughs> Snail's been a, a Snail's wonderful superhero yeah. streamer yeah. before. Uh, nice. Reese as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Only the once Snail's done it. 
Only the twice. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to Maybe not three times. Yeah. Yeah. Only three times. Only three times. Oh, come on. My, my. Uh, yes. Uh, so we've got some awesome incentives uh, this year as well. Uh, we have a new, newly designed varsity jacket. So last year's was black, which uh, Pete model. is is uh, sporting at the moment. Uh, this year's is white. Whoa! And it's got a cool. Um, <laughs> it's got a cool. <laughs> It's got a cool gradient lining the on the inside. <laughs> yeah, not this shirt. I'm just saying inside the jacket for this year's design. Very yeah. cool. It's got a cool gradient design. So look out. Um, a good lining. You might like. Is that it? Like it's a cool gradient. Yeah, in the it's lining. a cool gradient, sort of like silky lining on the Everyone inside. Everyone loves a little cheeky hidden That's lining. It. Yeah, and it's bespoke as well. You get your name personalized bespoke? on the sleeve. Oh, you uh, had me at lining, but yes, you're watching. So very excited. We raised 140 grand last year. Hell yeah. So hopefully we can smash it this year. So thank you again to all the Pocketeers for your support. And so, yeah, uh, if anyone wants to sign up or oh, yes. go I should give a call to action, shouldn't I? Yeah, no, I was going to say, yeah, they can support CTAs, people doing mate. it. Of or course. Run it themselves. That's it. Yeah, sign up here on Tiltify, join the game on Cancer Discord. I see Alex in the chat should be able to give you all the links to that. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can sign up on Tiltify, Tiltify to fundraise or you can donate to your favorite creator like Liz Dahlia. Awesome. Sure, yeah. Well, yeah, Huge. back pocketers, get around anyone in the community who's doing it or do it yourself mm. for the first, third or fourth time. <laughs> Same. Uh, you, can't, you can never stream for charity too many times. That's all we're saying. Agreed. Get behind it. Uh, now, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a change of tone. Oh, That was a really fun way to talk about charity and cancer. So you now need to make the tone. So this is going to be miserable. Oh, right? down. This okay. next segment. <laughs> He's gonna suck the life out of this show. It's Pete's party time. Pete's party, yeah. It's Pete's party time. Pa, 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 I don't want to go to a party. <clears throat> now, uh, Pete's party time, obviously one of our favorite segments on the show. One of the audience's favorite segments on the show uh, because it could be so many things. And uh, I've had emails and emails. I got a fax the other day, and someone was like, "Please, please, please, do this segment again." Um, and then I got a page, my pager went off and it was like, Whoa. do the hone zone. And I was like, well, we got to do the hone zone. <laughs> no, <an episode. laughs> there is a party dimension beyond that, which is known to man. It is a dimension, not vast, but very normal sized and as timeless as Gus shitting himself. That never happened. <laughs> it lies between the cock of the face and the testicle of the foot. This is the dimension of Pigawale. It is a game which we call the Home Zone. Uh. <laughs> me, me. You're goddamn right, it's back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Home Zone is celebrity heads with a twist. Each contestant has four cards, five cards, uh, and they will work their way from the broad stroke of a video game. What video game am I? Uh, title all the way down to a very specific thing. So their first card will be a video game and the following cards will be characters, items, or locations that appear in that game. As an example, if you started with Super Mario 64, say, you might find that your next card is one of the world's like snowman's land. And then one of those is one of the many stars within that level. And then perhaps your mother penguin and ultimately your fifth card would be uh, Mother Penguin's anguish at the loss of her child as an American Italian man yeets her child off a cliff. Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Which we should be able to get to. Mm. So the first person... Sorry? It really just dawned on me. Snowman's land. No man's land. Oh, yeah. That's very clever. Holy well. hell. Very That's clever. Brilliant. Nintendo. They know what they're doing. Oh, yeah. my lord. That happens a lot when you play stuff as a kid and you don't get wordplay and then later on you're like... <laughs> Mainly oh, double on Tom <laughs> Yeah. 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 Uh, so the first person to get their fourth card wins, but they get a fifth card, which is nigh impossible. Oh god, that's why uh, we so hate can, this game. There's so they literally can, a brick wall at the end of it. So like, they can you'll keep never playing win. because everyone's going to be playing simultaneously. Yeah, we're going to go around the horn, and I'll start with Steph. Can ask the first question as you all try and work your way uh, to finding out what your game is. Okay. Mm. So if you all want to ready your card one, it's hard to put it in without looking at it, and then we can all play along to help. Absolutely. So Steph's yeah. going to ask a question, and oh, we can right. all uh, yes or no or, or provide some assistance. What well, you could just you can if not looking at it, I would say take it off your Put head it in and then and do then. that. We never remember how to do this because we don't play this fucking game that much. <laughs> Sorry. All right. This is going to be the best. 
<laughs> oh, I should note we've turned the screen. I've done this right. Oh yeah, we, well. we can't see the screen. Stranger of the studio. Yeah, yeah. we're not looking at chat, right? Can't yeah, no one's... chat. Try... Yeah, stay cool, chat. Chat, chat, cool. Cool. chat can cool. chat can be up, but please um, don't. Uh, cause we we love to see you. Just okay. uh, okay, play, cool, play cool, play cool, play cool. Yeah, you good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. How much color ink do we have in this office? Are you not playing paint? Gonna... Less. I'm he's, just. He's, I'm just going to orchestrate. He's the game master. Ah, right. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Steph, I'll let you start. Um, do you, would you would you want to start? If you get a, if it's a yes, you can keep asking questions. Right. Uh, Steph. And I can only answer. I can only ask yes or no questions. Yeah, but we might throw in a little bone every now and then. Okay. Um, am I a game that has a uh, recognizable main character? No. Oh, okay. Wow, definitive. You am look, I you a Nintendo good. game? No. 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 Oh. Uh, am I a shooter? <sighs> okay. That... Not traditional. No, not. Uh, there are no. guns, but you're not a shooter by design. Okay. You're okay. Yeah. Stephanie. Um, am I? Uh, am I a game from a particular console? Am I a console exclusive game? No. 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 Am I an adult focused game? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Am I a uh am I a violent game? Yes. yes. Am I a horror game? Yes. yes. Am I part of the Resident Evil series? No. Son of a... <laughs> you were on such a good run you there. You that in yeah. such a patronizing way. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was last time. Why would he be again? That's crazy talk. Uh, yeah. This game is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, Shane, your turn. Do I fall into the sci-fi genre? Sure yes. do. Yeah. Uh, it, am I part of a franchise multiple entries in the yes. franchise? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was the first game in the series before 2000? Mm, oh, I'm, I'm going to say no, no, and then I'm going to confirm it. Okay. okay. Uh, Which uh, means, gosh, you're close. No, definitely not. It's a cusper. Right on the edge, no, 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 but no. No, no, no. no, no. 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 Okay. Steph. Not even close. Um, am I yes, a single-player game? Cusper. Are you a single-player game? Mm. <sighs> you can be played by yourself, but the answer is no. Uh, I'm a, am I a multiplayer game? Yes. Am I, I uh, <laughs> my, I'm just gonna start throwing some in there. Am I dead by daylight? You're not dead by daylight. Okay, so sci-fi game, part of a franchise, guns, but not a shooter. Am I a strategy game? No, no. No. No, no okay. Yeah. Am I a... Fantasy RPG? You yeah. sure are. <gasps> but no central protagonist? <laughs> no, no, sorry. No recognizable central character. There wasn't... The character that you uh... play as was not on the box art. No, were they? <laughs> We've confused her. <laughs> Do I feature a sexy vampire? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. You can guess. Awesome. Uh, am I Baldur's Gate 3? Correct. You are Baldur's Gate 3. So you're... You, can, you can jump to card 2. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do I get to go once you jump to card 2? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay. Once you clear a card, just um, move on. I'm a horror, adult, multiplayer, game. Oh, am I. Am I. Um, oh, shit. Am I nude men in the dark? Ah. Oh. I'm on the internet. I just realized Did we I get a close-up of him saying nude men in the dark and, <laughs> um, and clenching fists one, as well? One, one Am I saw the beard? Yes, 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 Fucking yes, yes, yes. Outlast. Outrun. Out, Outlast? Am I Outlast? The Saw Outlast game that we played. You are. I'm, what, the, what's it called? The Outlast Trials. The Outlast Trials. trials. You are. Nude men in the well dark. Done. I'll well give done. you that. I'll give you that. All right. The Outlast Shame. Trials. Oh, boy. The Move pressure's on. on. Uh, okay. Franchise. Am I made by an American developer? You are. Okay. Uh, am I a revered franchise? Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, am I a licensed game? No. Okay. So we're now places, potentially. You're, pl oh. yeah. You're now a place, a region. Within uh, the game space. that Correct. we, we yeah. have. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Steph, you're in Baldur's Gate 3. 
Where are you? Am I... And you can ask, am I... Am a happy I... place. A yeah, place. A, a happy place. Sure. Am I a, an emotive place? Uh, Ask am I a city? Am I a... Uh, mm. Yeah. So the best yes, part about this game is he has to continually explain the rules because it's such a good game. It's yeah. literally celebrity heads. <laughs> if you hate this game, you hate celebrity heads. <laughs> am I camp? Uh... N I don't. I mean, I haven't played the game, but she, oh, I think you, you, can, you can no. have camp. You can have camp. You can have camp anywhere, in multiple right? places. So, don't look at me. I'm I don't know. You look. You're so smug looking. Am I camp? You're no. Not camp you're not camp specifically. No. Um. Am I? Uh. Oh. Okay. So I'm trying to remember my memory of that game. Am I the headquarters? Uh, hub zone. No. Nah. You're being so specific. Well, because we only played the, the game no. once and I know like the full How many three... locations could there be? We only yeah, went yeah, to yeah. three places. But you could ask around a question that's like... Am I a well lit No, you already area? asked a question and the answer was no. Oh. Uh, okay, so just to, just to recap. Uh, long running franchise, well revered, American yep. made, yep. sci-fi, not a shooter. But when you said shooter, we were all like... Bleh. Yeah, like... Your character holds a gun, you're but it is not about you're shoot ah, shooting. You're shooting. Am I Bioshock? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when someone's like, I get where you're then coming it's from. It's gotta here. be yeah, Bioshock, yeah, 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 and it is not. You remember the gun that had games? You're shooting something, but not bullets. <laughs> okay, also, Bioshock okay. famously guns. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, a sh and a shooter. But you're yeah. the guest. <laughs> Stephanie. Um, am I? Uh, yeah. Am I a city? You're not a city. You're not a city. Am I a? Am I a scary place? Yeah, you are a scary place. Uh, am I... <laughs> well, again, we went to two locations. So uh, am I the police station? Am I within the police station? Uh, are you within the police station? Am I station? from the police station stage? Yes. Okay. Am I... The... Am I in a building? Yes. Am I... The jail cell area? You're not the jail cell area. Okay, I think I need more criteria here. So I'm going to ask, am I a platform exclusive? No, and you... You were... Until you weren't. Until you weren't. Okay, okay. Step. <laughs> <laughs> am I, am I um, a place where a specific character lives? Who's, pl who's no, played enough of no this? No, from Baldur's Gate players. No. Um, am I the street outside the police station? You asked if you were in a building, and the answer was yes. So no. <laughs> so no. The game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so was exclusive until I wasn't. American made. Am I a first party made game? Uh, yes. Great. Yeah. Famously a shooter that's not with guns. Famously. Well, no, there's a gun. It's literally a gun. Oh, but, but yeah, but okay. It's, but it's not a shooter. But you don't shoot bullets. It's a gun used it's for not shooting. Oh. There are multiple entries. Multiple entries. Revered, American made. Yeah. Um, okay. Most recent release was the most re recent release in the last. Three years. Yes. Oh. The, the, but it's not. It wasn't a full release. It was a uh, basically a tech demo for a platform that the developer released. Oh my god! It's either yes, no, or yes. You were a tech release. Well, okay, this has stumped me. No, that should yeah. have helped. Uh, tech demo. You are. You are. You are such an important IP to the developer of the hardware that they released that they thought there needs to be a version of this on this hardware when we launch to demonstrate the features of the hardware. So Steph said, your gun doesn't shoot bullets. Yeah, I, I'm looping on that My clues well. are so dumb. Prota <laughs> the protagonist is a woman, but you never see her. Unless you're- Oh! Oh, hang on, no. You do see her. Oh, yeah, you do see her. Oh, Bioshock 2! <laughs> <laughs> We'll so let, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just. We'll let you stew with that. Let me stew because I'm lining up all the other criteria to see if, if my if my guess is accurate. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'm going to look like a fool. But if you I'll, get, if you I'll guess, take a stab. If you guess the series, I'll give it to you. Portal. 
Two. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're a portal two. Portal two. Love Absolutely. It. You can one. jump to your second okay. card. You may you move to your next Thank card. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephanie. Um, am I, um, am I, uh, an, am I an evil place? Uh, you are a place corrupted by evil. Um, like, it, it is, uh, I mean, literally the name of the place is Fucked Up Place. <laughs> Greetings, adventurer. Should we go to the Fucked Up Place? <laughs> fucked Up Place. <laughs> That um, meant like in the wording structure. Mm. Yeah. Place name, descriptor of name. Fucked up place. Adjective noun. Adjective, Adjective noun. noun. <laughs> the other name for this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I gotta look at yours. Okay. 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 Is Prince it is it a is the place a uh a... It's not the underdark, is it? It's not the underdark. Alright. Am uh, I yes. in an underdark of sorts? Am I in the garage basement? You are the underground parking. Nice. On to level three. All right. Oh uh, okay, let's see if I can redeem myself. Uh, is this a location that uh, you find towards the end of the game? Ooh. Oh, I can't remember the cadence of this of Portal 2 so well. I think I believe, so. I believe, yeah, I believe... Second half? In in my head, yes, it is the back half of the game. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, ne next guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do I... Does a main character usually occupy this space, like main character in the game? I even remember well, Portal 2. 2011. <laughs> hey, no. Someone back 13 years. No. No, okay. okay. I mean, there's no characters in the game famously outside of... Isn't it Portal 2? It's like you and Wheatley the whole time? Uh, yeah, Wheatley, Gladys, and I'm thinking um, old mate J.K. Simmons' character. Cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cave. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But, it, yeah, I mean, he's on the radio throughout the whole yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's no. Fine. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Fucked up place? Focus on... No, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Stephanie. Adjective now. Adjective now. Adjective now. Uh, so if I'm, am, am I from like the end of the game? No, you're from the exact opposite of the end of the game. The beginning of the game. The beginning of the game, Angus. Uh, an item now, I believe. Uh, you could be, uh, but you are. We're now down to something more specific than uh, than an area, and you are something that is within. That, that was in the underground parking. I'll let you. Am I that. am I interactive? Can I be interacted with as the player? Uh, yes, you can be interacted with as a player. Am I a uh, what's the word? Am I non-organic? No, you are organic. Okay. Yep. Okay. So place maybe not towards the end. Uh. Am I the room where you get the speedy goo? I think Stop that's doing that. I think that's <laughs> correct. I believe. I, I can't remember can that. I can I get a room check? Yeah. yeah. So you're you are the condemned testing area, and I believe oh, it's once okay. you get outside the 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 clean I facility can't remember area. The names of them, yeah. that, that is when you encounter I, the speedy goo. I can I yep. can move on. We'll give Wonderful. you that. Thank the you. condemned testing area with the speedy goo. Speedy goo. Speedy goo. Hi, internet. Gels, please. They're gels. They're gels. gels. They're goo. They're gels. They're gels. Speedy gels. Speedy gels. Am I the wreckage of the nautiloid? Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna say the wreckage of the nautiloid is in the air. I'm going to say... Where, where did that That's not land? exactly correct, but you can guess again because it is where the wreckage of the nautiloid is. I don't remember what that's called. Fucked but... up place. It is fucked up place. What do you reckon place is? What do you reckon the noun is? Just think about the, the area. Crash site. Which crash. Is on. Which is which is in this area and it is a destructed nautiloid and it is. I mean, I was there. I didn't know it was called that. Yeah. I wouldn't know what it's called either. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna accept. Oh, I'm gonna. Great. I'm gonna accept it if you tell me the kind of place that it is. The geogra It's a beach. Yep. yep. It is the ravaged beach. Oh, yeah. That is the adequate it. response from getting rabbit. any of these right in this <laughs> game. Angus, you're up. Oh, I'm organic. Uh, am, oh, I an en am I an, an enemy? 
within mm. the game? No. What? Okay, so now I'm down to item or character. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, huh. Am I... I'm going to stay on the, the sort of gel theme here. Mm. <laughs> Please don't. Goo. No. Uh, <laughs> am I... Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, okay, I'm just going to guess... Um, well, am, am I organic? Let's just. No, You're organic. I am organic. organic. Okay, great. It's a good question, isn't uh, it? It's helpful. Am I a vegetable? <laughs> um, uh, no. Okay, never mind. I know no, he's, go- he's, he's going with the. We all yeah. know where we were going with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Who was the potato? Someone was in the poo. Gladys, Gladys is the potato. Is the potato. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie. Am I an enemy? I, uh, uh, this character was an enemy to your character, yes. It, it, uh, uh, let's say an antagonist, uh, but not a direct enemy to your character. Um, do I meet this character in Act 1? You met yes. this character in Act 1. And let's guide this towards an experience you had in the game that was maybe different from your other one that you've had. Let's let's maybe talk into the microphone as well, please, Stephanie. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, You're an enemy. Oh, sorry, you were an antagonist met in the first act of maybe a different a play. session that you a played. A session you played. With some Who fr- did we meet? All I remember was you murdering all of our friends. I mean, you met us. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> oh God, I can't remember what your characters were called. They were dumb names. <laughs> or were they excellent names? <laughs> Such a minor antagonist? Bullshit. The most important character that they encountered. Why would he feel that way? Yeah, okay. Your character was called something, some double entendre. It was, it was, yeah. It was a lizard man. And your character was... Also dumb. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Let's be honest. Your character was like a goblin man. Also known as. Goblin man? <laughs> Bigger than a goblin. An orc? I was an orc. Do you remember the name of the character? No. <laughs> I'm going to let you stew on it because okay. we helped you so much on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let you, I'll let you think about it for a little while. Gus. I'm organic and I'm not an enemy. Uh, so am I? A, am I one of the players in the in the realm? Yep. Am I evil, Gus? No, you're not evil, Gus. Oh, naked man in the duck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm organic. I'm in that chamber thing. Uh, not a vegetable. No. Uh, uh, am I... Do I help the main character the player in a way you dr- you dr- yeah you drive the plot for the main character i, I don't know that you directly help the main character not directly but through yeah. information yeah oh it's expositional so i'll allow am it. i cave johnson you are yeah. cave johnson hey! you're cave johnson, hey! you're cave johnson. Hey! Uh, <laughs> Love it. uh jump to your next oh yes next card yep next uh card. steph you've been stewing i have no idea uh, say the I first was green p- horny. Yeah, he was green horny, and he was an I orc. was an orc, and I was uh, and, and it-, it was a play on a Spider-Man villain, Sandman <laughs> orc. I love how Pete uh, hints are meant to help. Venom <laughs> orc. More confusion. Oh, fucking um, Octavius. Um, is yeah. it Dark Orc? Dark hey! Orc. It's Dark Orc. Dark yeah. Orc, that arc. thing you remember so well from the thing no, we all sorry. remembered. You're on you may your, proceed. So You're on to your next one. Uh, I'm going to charge ahead. <laughs> yes, please I do. Am, so if I'm not Evil Gus, am I one of our three players of the Knights? You are. Three players of the Knights. <laughs> three players of the Knights. <laughs> uh, am I male? Yes. Am I... Am I me? Yeah. <laughs> me. I'm me. I'm me. I'm me. Hey, All right. You. All right. You're under number four as well. Number four. So this is Cape Johnson over here. Okay. So, so Cape- now we're doing something because again we're honing in. <laughs> this is something. This is. Something- 
<laughs> this is something associated with Cave Johnson. Okay. Um, so this isn't level five ridiculous nonsense. This, this isn't is, level five ridiculous nonsense. This is guessable. Very guessable. Okay. Yeah. Am I organic? Yes. Yep. <laughs> I don't want to jump straight to it. Am I a lemon? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you said it. As you yeah. said lemons when you were Cave Johnson. Yeah. So I was obviously going to. All right. So All right. you're now moving on. You've won the game. You've won. You've won. Officially won. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bravo. Slice start. Slice start. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Bravo. Now you get the stupid card. Now, you get, now you're onto your Here stupid card Love and it. you can have a crack at that Love while it. the other two are working through. Um, who are both on? You're both on your fourth card. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Steph. So what is what? Did you... So now you are something associated with Doc Ork, uh, and it could be it could be anything. Like you know, think about uh, items that character has, things that that character did, whatever. Murder. He did murder. Did... I thought it was more of a me thing. I think you both perpetrated the murder. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had, totally. I had, I had the, I had just looking yeah. at your the thing, and I'm like, no, you. I think you're thinking of. A, a different thing. Oh, okay. I, de I had that stuff. Just helping? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? I, she, I guarantee you she did not hear anything. It's not helping. It's not helping. Yeah, you are correct. Uh, so it's an item that you might have. What class were you? Fuck. Um... Oh my god, we just killed Josh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a... Uh, you... Ruby played a bard. I played a druid. You were a monk? I was a monk. I was a monk. What were you? A warlock? Or a... I was a doc orc. That... Doctor. That's not a class. What class would be It'll closely love associated? You're loving your game now, Close aren't you, Burns? This shit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what class would be closely yes. associated yes. with being a doctor? A cleric. Potentially. It's a yes, no, or potentially game. You haven't asked a question yet. <laughs> you don't know much about clerics. Uh, Can't you say had... much about the cleric. <laughs> <laughs> the religion never appealed to me. <laughs> um, all right, uh, okay, is... yep, okay. No, as a cleric, you are very holy, and so you love... Books about Literally ask the question. Did Do you... I have books about religion? Yeah. No. It's not a book about religion. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm a thing now. Uh, I was... I'm going to work this backwards. Outlast Trials. Uh, I was the basement. And I'm me. And so now I'm an object? Or... Ne Something assimilated. Yeah, with... you're, you're a thing associated with uh, okay. you on the night. Jesus. Um, am I... Am I something that was an uh, am I an ability and or item as to that was equipable? I don't remember what they were How called. How many questions are you uh, <laughs> packaging all, into one put them question? All together. Um like I can't remember what they were called. It was like you have abilities that were called You're not an ability, no. I'm not an ability and or item. <laughs> I didn't say item. I said oh, you're not an ability. Oh, that was my question. I was trying to work out what are the abilities <laughs> called. I was like, yeah, what question? What were the that? abilities called? They were called like vests or something. Am I an item? Are you a vest? <laughs> no. Am I an item? You're not an item, no. You got two uh, questions. All right, okay. Now I'm something yeah. just oh my. somehow linked to the lemon. Yeah. And it's Cave Johnson ex existentialism, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Um, uh, am I a, a way that the lemon feels about itself? I really like that. Um, no. You're actually less. Uh, you punch up? Punch in? They, they we, they're on, on the, the graphics graphic. on screen as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So chat should be able to see it. Uh, but it is quite, it's quite, it's long your one, but I would say it's not so um, obs obscure really. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right. Stephanie, you've, you've sunk in your chair. <laughs> Steph doesn't ask questions. Gus ask 500 <laughs> questions. Yeah. <in> no. <laughs> um, Am I some sort of holy be. weapon? Yes. Yes. Mmm. Some Jesus. sort of holy weapon. Like a hammer? <laughs> you, I am not a physical weapon. No, not a physical weapon. Um, I am not an item or an ability. Did you ask two questions last round? I don't I'm remember. confirming previous okay. questions. <laughs> Go you got to find loopholes in this shithouse game. <laughs> um, so, am I... 
Am I interactable? Yes. Mm. By the player? It interacts with the player. Mm. Am I... Do I have a negative connotation? Absolutely. So you could ask broad questions yeah, like it. this. If you want to get painting a tapestry. Painting a tapestry. <laughs> Fucking hell. I have negative connotations. It can be applied to me as the player by an enemy. Uh, I'm going to say not by an enemy, but I'll give you that uh, it is an enemy. Mm. So a yes. It's a no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't caught on yet, guys? Uh, okay, so pretty long and... <laughs> Uh, associated with the lemon. I know it's. I know that this is in you somewhere because you screamed lemon when you found out about Cave Johnson. Oh, right. Okay, hang on. This let, is let in you. Yes. Yes. Am I the? Uh, okay, hang on. Let me just think. I'm Shout diving. out to Talith in I'm, chat. They're I'm all playing a game. My none mind of them like. is jumping back to 2011. It's a happier time. Interest rates are normal. Um, <laughs> Okay, am I... Okay. Am I the grenades that Cave Johnson is making out of the lemons to destroy the person's house or something like that? Oh I mean... <laughs> you gotta have it. He's gotta have it. it, it you are. You are. When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Make life take the lemons back. Get mad. Get mad. I'm okay. going to get my engineers to invent a combustible, combustible lemon, lemon that burns <laughs> your house down. House down. Holy that. shit. Yep. That's well right. I was trying to remember the story. That's yeah. amazing. Well done, well done, sir. Take well done. You got the five Shane. before these guys finish their four. <laughs> wow. Also, getting a holy shit from Josh <laughs> yeah. in the back of the house is like... <laughs> take it off and look at it. There is Shane, this game's great, right? Shane. This game's excellent. Fantastic game. Game of the year, 2024. One of the best games you've ever played. Yeah, put it on the box. Steph. Love it. Am, am it's I... a whiplash photo. Oh, That's I what I was going to say. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love that it's like, <laughs> I've got the complex one. Steph, so I'm not a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not a hammer, what could I be? You're not a physical, you're not a physical weapon I of a cleric. I, did, I never played a cleric. It doesn't matter. You've Are played you a have... fantasy RPG called, and it's a Dungeons and Dragons thing. Okay. You're not do a physical you, weapon. Do you, so I'm a spell that the cleric uses? Yes. Like, like some sort of holy fire? Oh, Sacred flame, flame is holy fire! fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's Yay. like... I've never played a cleric! Fucked up place? See, it's like Ravage Beach. Yeah. Uh, holy flame, <laughs> sacred fire. Sacred fire. You, you might get it. a crack at doing your number five, but I wouldn't stress too much about it. All right, so I'm Gus. I'm coming last. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm negative connotations that can be applied to me by an enemy. Is an enemy. Is an enemy. Um... Does it make my health go down? When it attacks you, yes. Oh, okay, so it's an enemy in that. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's, am I organic? <laughs> yes. Uh, so am I... Am I organic? <laughs> am I organic? <laughs> <laughs> Is this organic? Uh, am I bipedal? Yeah. Okay, right. So I'm an enemy. Fucking great well, question as well. <laughs> I like this question. Well, my previous one was am I an enemy and I wasn't. I was me. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm an enemy. So uh, am I. Am I evil me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was an amazing journey. That was an amazing what journey. What is that last yeah. 60 seconds? This game is crazy. It's why this game exists. You guys don't have to play for your number fives. So they're obscure. Boy. They're too. They're, you're not. Well, and he's really finished. Am I? Am I? You can have one. You can have one round of yeses. Am I the burning desire to murder Gale, despite the fact that he did nothing to deserve it? Uh, I'm going to give that to you. It's actually instead of Gale, it's a the Astarian. Astarian, but we did that to both characters, and that was the vibe for sure. Love it. Yeah. Uh, Gus, do you want to have a crack at your vibe? The ruthless <laughs> murder of the pale elf. The ruthless murder of the Wonderful. pale elf. Wonderful. This one can be. This one is a lesson that can be applied to real life as well. Mm. A lesson that can be applied to real life. Am I? Think about the last two things that happened as well. Like it, this is this is yeah. in sequence. Yeah. Uh, I mean, am I the existential dread of knowing that 
there is potentially another version of me out there? Am I me having... Am I me killing someone else but not knowing it? Am I... Am I the thought experiment that is... <laughs> What is the ego and the id if one of them has a knife? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Your two yeah. gusses are worse than one. Hey! hey! <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was home. As I thought. It's, well that done. was home zone, everyone. Let's oh, see the car. Oh, We're well not going to see it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you may as well play it. There is a party dimension beyond. It is a dimension not vast, but very normal sized, and as timeless as Gus shitting himself. It never happened. It lies between the cock <laughs> of the face and the testicle of the foot. This is the dimension of Pigawale. It is a game which we call the Home Zone. Never to be seen again. <laughs> Good effort, everyone. There you go. That was a home zone. That was Pete's party time. And we'll be back after this little ad break. Is your thumb chafed? Calloused? Does it hurt when you headshot the wizard from the moon? You've probably got Destiny Thumb. A condition that affects one out of every one Destiny players. Lucky there's a Vexia. Just apply a Vexia thrice daily to the affected area. Side effects of a Vexia may include heart murmurs, heart whispers, heart shrieking, jam tongue, deep vein thrombosis, shallow vein thrombosis, elephantitis, giraffe neck, Truman Show syndrome, me, myself, and Irenitis, the quakes, the shakes, the shake and bake, the bacon snake, the snake and rake, foodborne illnesses including breech, banana, and chicken caesarean salad, bulging vein, bungee mane, imposter syndrome, composter syndrome, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, beaver fever, rat bite fever, and Saturday night fever, facial blindness, severe facial remembrance, alien hand syndrome, mermaid foot, and in some rare cases, Destiny Thumb. Do not take Avexia if you are also taking medication for Fortnite Fungus or Dota Dick. think you have over someone who gets a video of Minecraft parkour and puts an <laughs> AI voice over it reading a Reddit story? I think I'm just like one, like half a step up from that. I really think mm. it's... <laughs> just enough. My entire ego lives in that space between <laughs> Minecraft parkour <laughs> video and and me. That's That's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> we joke, we laugh, but there have been some sad, sad nights where I've been lying oh, yeah. in bed Look. and I fall like the Minecraft man <laughs> might if he makes the wrong jump. I fall. Yeah. And and I, I, I listen to some of those and they're just like... Some am just, I the asshole post from Reddit yeah. and you're like... Wow, they are. Yeah, they, they really are the asshole. <laughs> or they're not. Well, we'll they're not. find out. Oh.
hey, you stuck around and you're back. We really love that. Thank you so much for joining us on Back Pocket for the last bit of the show. We had an ad break there and we saw a word there from Amira1012. Shelfie, like what they did there. Selfie, bit of a shelf. Oh, I get yeah, it Yeah, it took a little bit to click there, but uh, yeah. Also like full of extensive novels and collectibles and nice mm. things on it, whereas my shelves are not that uh, bountiful with with lovely items. Books yeah. I haven't read. Uh, thanks for sending in words. Keep doing that. We will play them. We will. If you get in there with a new one, you'll jump ahead of the queue and we will play that one next week. That's our guarantee and promise to you. Maybe make your word next week's show date, which is what? The 11th of April. There you go. Do a, a word that is 11th of April and then we'll play it. Did you shout that out with hope that they would clip that up and use it in it? 11th of April. No, nah, don't use that. Which one's better? Well, 11th of April. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I was going to channel J.K. Simmons. 11th of April. There it is. Wow, that's that was what perfect. you're going with. There we go. I was just uh, to do one. Were you rushing or were you dragging? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite my tempo. Not quite my tempo. Uh, we also saw an ad there, uh, another ad for Generation Games, which we shouted out at the top of the show. So exclamation mark Generation Games in the chat, and you'll get details there on how you can grab early bird ticket for either yourself family passes as well uh they were sp sponsoring this top of the show but uh do go and check it out if you're in sydney on those dates and you're keen to go and get with some like-minded gamers at a convention of sorts uh that was the tagline that they didn't go with like-minded gamers at a convention <laughs> of, of sorts. sorts get with get with as well Gaming get and with things. um and then we also saw a shout out for the podcast there uh but we're going to move on with the show now with the last section of the show much better than the party we had before because we're going to take things from fun and festive to serious and Festive. <laughs> Festive. Uh, we're going to purge ourselves of our sins. That's right. We're heading to the Pockety Confessional. Oh, oh dear. Tisk tisk indeed. The Pockety Confessional is where we purge ourselves of our many gaming sins. Uh, and this segment is brought to us by Dump Days. Someone should fade away when that it's happens. It's a beautiful sound. It is. It's, um... Josh ringtone? It's Josh. It's it, a, it, it is my ringtone. Yeah, it's yeah, his message you... tone. Mm. Yeah. But it just inspires a little moment of like, <gasps> it's what? like a realization, Wonder. a yeah. worry, and a nostalgic throwback. Health has film. arrived, I yeah. feel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Most of the time lately, it's just spam. <laughs> Most of the time, it's <laughs> yeah, just yeah, spam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Dump Days, for sponsoring the segment. Domino's has a two for one offer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and is tradition when Dump Days sponsors a segment, we check out one of Dump Days' wonderful bit of art, uh, or comics in this case. Mm. Dump Days is a talented uh, artist with a penchant for uh, bin chickens. I buy ibises, if plural. Uh, and so we're going to have a look at a quick... Oh, it's a four oh, panel. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, let's punch in there. And uh, Shane, as our guest, would you please do the honour of voicing Ibis number one? I'm going to go for real hardcore Aussie. Please. This whole park is a dump. I wish I could get people to change, but what can I do? Just so you know, everyone does an Ock voice for yeah. an Ibis. <laughs> that's I'm yet I, to that's meet Ibis, yeah. a posh Ibis. Peter, can you please give us a heroic voice? What you can, my friend. Oh, Christ. <laughs> This is pretty accurate, yeah. actually. Non copyright infringing hero Major Earth. <laughs> Anyone can make a difference. You just have to try. Oh, remember, <laughs> the power is yours. What the fuck is ah, this? Ah, ah. <laughs> Let's move to panel number three. That's four. The power is mine. Uh, Steph, do us the honors. Ibis number three, two. Uh, mate, I told you not to eat that spied spam. You're tripping. That's oh, panel four? Is tripping. That's panel four. You're tripping. Oh, good, good, good. You're tripping. Very good. The drool, the drool leaving that poor Ibis's mouth. I the, see. It, yeah. ate, it ate some bad spam. And, and then it saw Captain Planet. There, and Captain sometimes Planet. it's like we punch in hard on the comics and like without the context of you the need, four panels, no, you're like, yeah. where am I? Where is What's it? going on? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd Captain Planet it. go? Look at those pupils. <laughs> Damn, mm. that mm. Ibis tripping. Having a great time. Uh, thank you so much, Dump Days, for your continued support and patronage of the show. Go support us on Patreon. That's how, you, uh, yeah. that's how we make this show. Uh, all right, we're going to round out the show with a Pockety Confessionals. That's where we each take it in turns to step into the Pockety Confessional and uh, purge ourselves of our sins. Peter, would you like to go first? No. Uh, Stephanie, would you like to go first? Sure. Stephanie, please do us the honours of uh, stepping into the confessional. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, I'm here to confess. Um, terrible sin. One I think you all know. I have become addicted to Red Dead Redemption. Specifically this roleplay server that I keep playing for like hours on end. But I don't care. I'm living my best life. I'm a cowgirl now, baby. Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a bad way to confess in a in a confessional booth. You don't get to true. hoot and holler and then let well then now leave the confessional booth being like yeehaw, <laughs> <laughs> yeehaw, suckers. You are Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, <laughs> Hail Mary motherfucker. <laughs> you are playing a lot. I did get eaten by a bear. I know. Yeah. Look, the 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 duration is definitely a problem, and the mm. and the nights. A uh, problem. <laughs> the nights are long. The, pro the 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 issue is that like because it's all obviously it's based around the, the people that I interact with, mm -hmm. and because it's time zones around the world and there's people from around the world that that log in. I've because I started playing initially in the evenings when Australia time zone happened. That's when it's quietest on the server. Mm. Around about midnight, all the Europeans log on. So I would start talking to people and start like, these great storylines, and then I would stay on. So then I was like, I've got to stop this. I need to start trying to stream it as much as I can during the day. And so I can start when the server is busy and play during the US time zone. But all that meant was that I started playing during the US time zone with all the US players, then the Australian players logged on and I would play with them. And then the Europeans would log on and then I would also play with them. And so then I'm just playing 24 hours a day. Yeah. You did a 17 and a half hour session on, on your my birthday? birthday, it was yeah. a gift wow. to myself. That's, That's totally fair fine. Enough. That's totally fine. That. Yeah. That's yeah. fair enough. Is yeah. that the longest session you've done? I think so, yeah. 17 hours straight. Yeah, it was, and now was... your Red Dead character is playing you. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. Let me yeah. Or oh. is she playing everyone around her? No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's no. the you've other been, one. You've been played. <laughs> you've been played. It's so fun. It's so intense. And I feel like I've got so many um, people. I've seen people from my Red Dead streams in the chat tonight. They've, nice. they've, followed, they've followed me over. Uh, other yeah. addicts. Yeah. Other, uh, other converts, yeah. some might even say. Do you have... A five-step program to make this a, 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 a something you're not going to burn out on? Because I love how much joy this brings you. And I've tuned in <laughs> on multiple occasions and just watched from afar as it's just like it takes over. Like you are, it's like, you're not playing this game it, again. It's playing you kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I guess the, the amazing thing about it is it, it is like a soap opera, but everyone's writing it in real time, it, it completely improvised. And mm. there's moments that just seem like they're too perfect to have not been written, but they just kind of happen. Uh, I love it, but I, it is like even just from my experience in like muds and stuff like I, it is something that I'm going to burn out on eventually because there's a magic that happens at the start where everything's new and yep. you haven't seen all of the kind of different tricks and things that people can do to kind of make it feel immersive. I think once you really know the map so well and you've kind of been around, you've done everything, you've done all the, the various, you've played every angle and stuff like that. There's only, I think you, it starts to get to a point where you've seen everything. And Yeah, I just, yeah. so your solution to... Your solution to finding an end point at this is to see everything. <laughs> As an obsessive person, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I was thinking, is there? How do we wean you off it so you don't? Because bur burning out is just intrinsically bad. Like you, mm. yeah. you are left with some yeah. little bit of like, I got to a point where I just had to stop. And I'm like, how do we keep what is such a like? wonderful experience you've had how do we keep that as a treasured memory by like by weaning you down to smaller sessions which i know is not really possible in a way that then keeps your joy for this thing mm -hmm. I, I, we don't have the answer it ne is a nor just the priest it is a predicament yep we could ask the priest <laughs> i do Back like the booth. <laughs> i do like that you uh from the very first confession have uh nailed the brief of christianity which is to confess for the, the sin uh, ask for forgiveness with intent to continue to sin. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Got it in there one. Go. Got it in one. <laughs> All right. It. Shane. Yes. Would you like to also purge yourself? I'm ready. Josh, uh, get in the booth. Josh, get in the booth. Sorry. Forgive me, Pockety, for I have sinned. Oh, he's I've got a line too. Carrying this guilt with me for more than 20 years. Um, in my younger times, I... Uh, I was addicted to, to Pokemon, but I only had Pokemon Silver. Uh, I needed Pokemon Gold. So I convinced my parents that my brother really wanted Pokemon Gold <laughs> for Christmas. Uh, and I have lived with that guilt. Um, <laughs> poor Aaron. He uh, had a wasted Christmas gift back in <laughs> probably 2002, I want to say. Did not give a shit about Pokemon. No, didn't yeah, care. One okay. iota. Um, probably wanted some kind of mountain bike contraption 
Uh, he was the outdoors kid. I was the indoors kid. Uh, yes. Confessing now, 20 years later. I'm very sorry. Did, did he feign so joy good. for the gift? Uh, he was very confused. <laughs> he was very confused. Um, yeah, I think he knows maybe three Pokemon. So didn't understand what had happened that Christmas. Wow. Uh, That's amazing. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's uh, so funny. Can probably the, the turtle, probably uh, Squirtle, sorry. Tur 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 oh, I love I'm turtle. Such, I love I'm turtle. such a Pokemon hardcore. Oh, mum and dad, squirtle. thanks. I love turtle. You just played the role yeah. you there. Wow, um, okay. So, yeah, context is uh, older or younger brother? Younger. Younger, younger. brother? Yeah. Um, okay. How often did you uh, did your parents come to you for advice on, yeah. on gifting? Oh, they knew what like what he liked. Yeah, and they I knew that they I was. But you interject. You got in and were like, I you know, like, this I've year, got get a ahead great of it. suggestion yeah. wow. for Aaron. Yeah. And I even played up this like we can share this together. Like I've got silver, he'll have gold. Yeah, yeah. Got a bond oh, over yeah. it. Thing. We don't want him to and get a mountain for, bike. Sorry, was... a mountain bike contraption. I don't know what he wanted exactly back then. Multi fishes, and he's here in the studio with us tonight. Yes, it's Jerry. Springer. Uh, <laughs> yes, but I mean, it was all for Ho Oh and probably some Pokemon I need to trade from God. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Was it an instant guilt or is it something that's crept up on you? Oh, God, time? it was definitely not instant guilt. Yeah, because no. you had yeah, it. You I had, had, all, you the, had, a video I had game all the Pokemon. Game it. it was yeah. great. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Um, uh, Red Herring was asking what you got for Christmas that year. Because you, did you, if you got a bike, they oh, probably right. just got. They probably just mislabeled Aaron the presents. Got his, Aaron got his revenge the following yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Two thousand and two. Yeah, it's probably an Xbox game. Of Amazing. Some sort, maybe. Nice. Traditionally, yeah. and I might be wrong here. I don't have a brother, but like, I would have thought the older sibling often drives some of the younger siblings' like hobbies and things interest. like that. Okay. And yeah. so, for, an interest. So, for you to be into that and them not be following up behind mm. being like yeah i'll either want to, like i can't play because you're always hogging it or something yeah. probably why they wanted to go mountain biking yeah but he, was, he was into gaming just nowhere near as deep as, as did I he was, have so. to feign because we've all been here as well the feign the interest of it as you said to the parents and be like oh cool I, yeah i think because like we we like saw the pokemon movie together so he was into it he's just like oh i did just like that we can pokemon do it together movie? Of course. Who did? Who did? I fucking bawled my eyes. You out. cry in the I movie. I still cry. Yeah. Pikachu cries. I, would cry. cries. I reckon if I watch that scene, I would bawl. The tears <laughs> the revive tears? Ash from the dead from stone Pikachu cold. Pikachu cries. Ash. Would you pokey ball? Well done. But does, when he cries, does he go Pika Pika? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And the tears and of tear all the Pokemon, of, yeah. like you know, sort of spirit bomb energy into stone cold Ash and bring him back to life. What the fuck? He sacrificed himself. To, to stop the conflict. Yeah. I'm with his brother. I'm sitting there being like, this sucks. I wish <laughs> I, was I, I want a mountain bike. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I'm very a, sorry. That's I'm very sorry. In terms I'm of something sorry. bad, bad. But in, bad. as a confession, yeah. spot on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nailed the brief. Yeah. Um, I'll jump in. I can go. I was just trying to... Are you sure? Look, I'm ready. After you, please. I'm ready to confess. <laughs> Forgive me, Pockety. I did a bad, bad thing. <laughs> uh, I was a massive fan of the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. And I played many, many hours of that game. And I loved it so much that I, I played through the entire game. And then I started to explore what other things I could do in the game. And I went to forums online and learned some tricks, some cheats even, that you can do in Morrowind. And so... I used a spell of soul bind on myself, soul trap on myself, with an, an augment to abilities that meant that any time you cast that spell, it was a permanent stat upgrade for effectively free to your character. It was a way of using in game mechanics to hack your character into godlike status. I then proceeded to play through the expansions as a god so <laughs> as i know <laughs> so <laughs> tribunal blood moon were not a challenge at all <laughs> i walked right through those stories <laughs> uh and uh i regret it i didn't i get, didn't get to experience that part of that brilliant game uh because i ruined it for myself by being too into it um so there you go see ya <laughs> Get out of the boat. I love that your confession to a religious sound <laughs> I think I I'm made a myself god. a god. I made myself a god. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like Morrowind rare candy hack. 
Yeah, yeah back totally. Back yep. Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't it wasn't a cheat per se in the sense that you like you typed anything. It was like you just used utilized a, a it's, it's, yeah. There was an exploit, exploit yeah. in the game, yeah, it's which is like your iron patcher. daggers. And this is before Skyrim. patching was really a thing. So yeah. that it was mm. like they couldn't fix that. Yeah, yeah, totally. But you could exploit it. And yeah, you regret... Because you can't go back now and really enjoy that the same way. Can you? Oh, Morrowind. What? Morrowind's Mor rough. That's Morrowind's what I'm pretty fucking old. That's what yeah. I mean. So it is like, old, you ruined your game. chance to enjoy that on its yeah, authentic I level. I, I don't think I could go and play Tribunal and Blood Moon now yep. and enjoy them. Uh, I mean, I, I think I would enjoy the experience and I played through that game and... Uh, you know, it would feel dated to someone who hadn't played any Morrowind and it will feel dated to me, but I think I could, but I'm not compelled to because I have finished them. I've, you know, they, and they were epic, epic stories. Like you literally tribunal, like is about going in one of the tribunal gods has been murdered and you go and like try and resolve it with the other gods and you can kill them or you can do whatever you want. Uh, and so it was like, and being a god myself, I was like, <laughs> boink. yeah, so it was, uh, it, it, I've seen the end of the story, so there's no point in revisiting, but you didn't um, get to experience it. I didn't experience, uh, finding Almalexia like torn apart in an underground Dwemer basement -y thing. And I was like, yeah, this means nothing. I'm, I'm God. <laughs> I'm God. So long. It, it got to the point where I would, and I don't know if anyone played it. Morrowind on the original Xbox. Uh, one of the... I don't want to labor too much into detail, but one of the amazing things that they did when they ported the game to Xbox was the game has so much loading to do and so much the, the console only had so much memory cache that it had to dump that memory and the best way to do that was to turn the console off. Restart so itself, it, yeah. It would leave a loading screen up and it, the loading would stall because... The Xbox was literally restarting Jesus. to then load the rest of it. And so it took ages. Like I, if I would load in my character, it took like literally four minutes to just load into the game. Uh, and my character could jump so far <laughs> that I would jump and hit a loading screen, oh. hit a loading screen, hit a loading screen <laughs> and land halfway across the map. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's I was pretty, like, how that's was I having fun to enjoy Morrowind? Really? How, was, how I mean... was I having fun as a kid doing that? But I was. I was like, I finished the game, so now I can just like anyway. Break bye. It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah. It was okay. Amazing. Fair enough. That's Ruined funny. one of your favorite games. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Worth yeah. confessing. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll jump in next. Uh, if you'd be so kind. Ding ding. Like, oh, he's a fan. Sorry, <laughs> you don't get that wrong. Uh, forgive me, Pockety, for I have sinned. Um, I was a sucker for video game magazines back in the day. I was subscribed to, uh, in particular, all the Nintendo ones, Super NES magazine system, SNES MES, I believe. And then in my later days, uh, I'm still looking this way because I want to look. I'll look at Steph. Uh, I, N64 Gamer. I had a subscription and I read these things cover to cover and it was the N64 era so of course the game we were all playing at school at the time was Mario 64 nice. and when we all had the game and were playing it I was we were all collectively while you know talking at school racing to complete the game completely uh, and who could who could beat it and I found out that if you got so you needed 70 stars to beat Bowser but yep. there's 120 stars in the game in total. And we were all saying that's kind of 100%ing it. So we were all at school for bragging rights, seeing who could get there. I read in the magazine that they were like, oh, here's what happens when you get 120 stars. You can find a secret cannon in the garden in the front of the castle, oh, the Peach's yeah. Castle. You can launch to the roof and Yoshi's up there and congratulates you for getting 120 stars. So I took that information and I went to school and I lied to everyone and said, I've got 120 stars. And they're like, bullshit. And I was like, no, here's what happens. I said this. Then one of my best friends did it, came to school like a week later and is like, it's true. Gus wasn't lying. He must have got it first. All hail Gus. And All hail Gus. <laughs> my friend had been like struggling and doing like cl click clock tower or nuts. No, that's click clock woods. Tick tock tower or the, the really hard... Uh, level, so I've ignored you the whole time you're over here. Uh, <laughs> and ignore that to get 120 stars to see if I was bullshitting. Uh, and yeah, I wasn't, but I hadn't, I'd got 70 stars beating oh, Bowser gosh. and got a single star beyond that. 
Uh, and I've not told anyone till this day. Until now. Come on out. Get Come out on here. Out. Uh, I love how all of your gaming, we're like video game confessions, like a, 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 a classic game that you haven't finished or you said you've finished and then you hadn't. All of your, all of your confessions are you like lying Betraying to your, your friends. friends yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever got 120 stars in Mario 64? In life, Gus. In life. In life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No. But I mean, you all lie to your friends at some <laughs> point or another. We all wear a mask. We all wear a mask, metaphorically speaking, of course. Um, I, I, what, I don't you think... never did it? No. You didn't even, you didn't even, you, the lie stuck. Next stream, next like, stream. I, 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 were you still, were you still going That'll for be a it? 35 hours Before stream. your mate got it? Before my mate. So I hit 70. So you hit 70 and then you lied about hit it, having 120. Correct. And then were you still playing to try and get 120 before your nah. friend came in and said, I got 120 and you're right? No. Why no. would he? Why would I? I found the information from a magazine. Well, because what if your friends came over to your house and they looked at your game safe? This is the era before internet, really. So, like, this information was valuable and no mm. one really knew. So, when I read that, I was like, holy shit. Yeah, and I was like, could... I, think, I think I read that and then I didn't go to school with the intention of lying. I was like, we were talking and I was like, yeah, I did it. And I was like, I'm lying. And they're like, bullshit. And I'm like, no, nah, you get a cannon, you can go see Yoshi. And they're like, no, you can't. I'm like, yeah, you can. You can get a cannon, fire yourself up there. And then, yeah, my friend Rowan, who's, you know, a better person than I am <laughs> in so many ways, uh, went and did it and was like, yeah, it's true. Yoshi's up there. And they're all like, oh, sorry we, sorry we doubted you, Gus. Spoil your own enjoyment of the game, Gus. You already knew so like funny. Pete with Morrowind. So funny. I don't know. The bragging rights in the playground are worth it. Well, um, uh, for you, uh, 10 Hail Marys. And Why do I get the punishment? Because you betrayed scars. other people. <laughs> Fair you, enough. I mean, you did. Yes. That's yeah. true as well. You got nothing. You All right, that. we'll do one more quick one around the horn. Okay. Mm. These yeah. can be the lesser sins. Okay. Oh, I don't know about Let's mine. go that way. Yeah, oh, yours okay. is actually, Ruby, yeah, and you, I, get Ruby, and have, Ruby and I have one each as well. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Both yes, get in yes. there. Here we go. Hit us. Oh, right now? Yeah. <laughs> go, go I'll go first. Yeah. Okay. I got okay. to confess right now. Right. Oh, shit. Forgive me, Pockety, for I have sinned. Oh, he's over here. Hang on. <laughs> it gets around. <laughs> there we go. That's a bit, a bit easier. Um, let me bring the music up. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because you've walked into the confession booth and you're fussing about. Yeah, because I'm nervous to confess my sin. <laughs> Technically, you're sitting the. <clears throat> you're actually sitting the right way. You sit with the facing the same way as them, don't you? Yeah, what? or you put or you put your tongue through. The <laughs> <laughs> that is the correct way. To do it. Uh, I got to figure out which one. I did have two. Like, one of them is kind of boring. I'm just hopelessly addicted to a game. Well, don't do that uh, one. Similar to similar to Steph. I'll I'll touch on it because it's important to confess. Mm. It's all not really. Sense. This is all pretty fake. We get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> We're running short, Gus. This is why. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to he's know. padding for time. He's padding. <clears throat> Do that for another 15 minutes. We'll all go outside. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No. Confess. Uh, I'm very addicted to Bellatro to the point where in the last mm. like three or four weeks I've got over 70 hours. Um, it is a very good game, and I am very much enjoying it. But arguably, yeah potentially too much are you um, also watching people play it i've seen you watching people stream bellatro correct yeah correct. on employment time uh correct Not father thank you very time. much i mean Sorry. ruby was recording a podcast what am i going to do listen to that i don't know yeah, that's a <laughs> good point Fair call. uh you got another one while you're in there yes uh indie mouse says i bet you're watching northern lion and you are he called me the other day he was like pete do you know this guy I was like, I don't recognize it. He's like, that's Northern Line. Northern yeah. Line makes the best bilateral content. I've been watching Northern Line's bilateral content. He's so funny. He makes I funny. Sh- I haven't thought about that guy in 10 years and he's still out here making content. And what I said to you, Peter, was oh real. God. I like it because he's now like very close to me in age. Like, where <laughs> totally. His sense of humor is like, yeah, anyway. I'm not going to talk about Northern Line. That's not what we're here for. Um, the other one actually happened last night. I was playing TFT, which is a like auto chess battler from from Riot Games League of Legends and someone in the game in my ranked game recognized me because I used to run the TFT esports scene in Oceania and I they were contesting me for my comp this is very specific to team fight tactics but um and I, I I used my like the fact that they knew me and they were excited to see me in the game uh 
to 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 get them to stop contesting me with my car. Amazing. So you were like, <laughs> "Oi, mm. I will never run another tournament in Australia again <laughs> if you if you keep sending my or what was it? Who's buying up the who's correct? Yeah, buying yeah, up the yeah, yeah. when you contest items so, you want. Uh, yeah. And I, it, it backfired. Clearly, uh, the Lord, the good Lord, is, was watching, uh, and I went eighth in that game, which is last. So, uh, <laughs> it did, eighth, it, which it is also known as last. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've already. Yeah. Uh, that's basically your hail Mary's cover. You've served Correct. your penance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 Amazing. yeah. Forgive me. Uh, Ruby, do we put you in straight away, or do we go around one more time? Ruby, Ruby got one. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby's actually got three. Uh, oh Christ! Four. All right, we'll come back four. to you. Sorry. Just no, get, no. give it, we, give us one. Yeah, yeah, we can do one. Give us your best one. Right. Imagine being the priest that's like, I got a few. Yeah. Give me your best one. <laughs> I've got golf in 20 minutes. Give me one. Oh, should I? Should I? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, priest. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, oh, yeah, I did have a few. Okay. Well, I won't also. One? Yeah. Please. Okay. Um, which one do you think? Give me your best sin. Yeah. They're all what pretty a, horrible. What a sinful See, the thing woman. Is, is like when I used, because I'm, I'm a, a, a non-practicing and also non-believing Roman Catholic, right? Um, mm -hmm. Wog family is how it works. But uh, when I would go and do confession, one, I would lie. Okay, so sorry. You Are you the only person in this room that's done this IRL? And are you confessing to be, yeah. lying in a confessional? Wait, in a confession? No one's. Oh no, I, I've done this. Yeah, done Catholic, it? Catholic high school. I've yeah. done this. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah I'm, okay. I'm so. Catholic. Catholic. Okay. If I didn't do it, they would have gotten mad at me. I couldn't get the. I couldn't get the vickies. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's where you get the wine and the vickies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, hi divas. Uh, so what did I do? Oh, they're all pretty insane. Um. <laughs> Give us Fucking one. Say something. The priest is, <laughs> Jesus okay. Christ. The priest okay. has left okay. by this okay. stage. Okay, okay. Quickly. You know what? The priest was always really patient with me, so <laughs> this feels very unrealistic. Uh, this is Greek Orthodox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a very real and genuine fear that one day I will meet Hideo Kojima and he will recognize me from a fake joke screenshot that I made from a very real now deleted Nintendo Australia mm. YouTube video that yeah. I was interviewed for at the Rooster Teeth Expo he was at and the fake screenshot I made said that I was specifically there at the expo to kiss Kojima. You, you're forgiven. Get out of the booth. <laughs> Get the fuck out of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Are you why death stranding happens? Uh, I'm sorry, God. Here's your biscuit and wine. Exceedingly specific <laughs> since having a <laughs> <laughs> And there's also three more. So Is that a sin? Uh, well, we've all, we've each still got a sin to 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 go. Speed round through speed the booth. Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. really speed or any of that, but we'll um. Steph. Steph, back in the booth. Mm. Get in there. Mm. Uh, forgive me, Pockety, for I have sinned. Um, as you know, uh, Peter, my lovely husband, love what of my life. What the hell is this about? <laughs> um, How did I get in here? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's just, I know it's a bit cramped, but um, just work with me. Are you oh. doing your, are you about to go into your fucking... I'm in the couple's booth. What's it, your character's name? Your British red dead lady. There's a bit of British oh, voice Ivy. There. there was an Ivy. There was a bit of Ivy coming through. <laughs> um, so, uh, Peter. Many people know that Peter and I uh, met um, uh, at Good Game. Uh, I'd been working there for about a year, and then mm -hmm. Peter um, started working at the show uh, after that. And I, um, a lot of people ask me, was it love at first sight? And uh, I say uh, no, because for the first three months Peter worked there, I did not know his name. And I never bothered to ask, because I thought he was an intern. And we had a lot of interns. And when I saw that guy, I was like, there goes an intern. And <laughs> then I was like, that intern's been hanging around a lot. And then it turns out he was a full-blown employee that I had no idea that we had. And then I still didn't I learn his no name, because had. I didn't see him that often. And then finally, and then finally I learned it. And then, and then we became great friends. It was love at first name learning uh, yeah. three months you on the track. Name, you're like, I love Peters. Then <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there was a brief period of time where I was drawing dicks all over his desk, which I guess is my way of saying that I liked you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now the anyway, priest is like, excuse me, I'll you up. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> God. Sin. Yeah, I still have uh, one of the 
the I had I had for ages. It was four post-it notes up my phone, and as production oh, yeah. coordinator, I had to make calls constantly. It was all day I was on the phone, and they'd like like a hand like a hand the landline receiver phone. a landline phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. The 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 earpiece and talky bit. <laughs> Earpiece and talkie bit. The bring bring. The yeah. bring bring. Yeah, the bring bring to the face. And there was a there was a penis up the whole length of it. Of I, yeah, I drew. So it, I, would I grab drew a dick it, and on, put it on in the my bottom face. post. It were the balls and the bottom of the shaft. Then there was middle shaft. <laughs> then there was middle shaft. Mm. Second part of the shaft mm. and the top part. A head shaft. I mean, now national and broadcast for everyone. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I then yeah. I and then I coloured it with uh, uh, highlighters. Of course. Did you color that? I don't think you colored that. You colored um. You had the one that I still have is unicorn penis love. Oh. And it's not a unicorn with a penis for a horn, as one might expect. It is <laughs> a unicorn is like... with a full horn and a penis. <laughs> Lovely. Right. Lovely. And like a, like not a, horn. not a fully erect horse dick either. <laughs> like a bit of a, a limp yeah, horse dick. Yeah, they always right. are. Yep. Yeah. You missed the best part. Did I? There's rainbow cum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. That's what the highlighters were. That's what the, That's highlighters, what the highlighters were. were. Yeah. Uh, also, as a production assistant, can you get some new highlighters? We're running out. <laughs> the, the gross. I mean, I had the handset dick for so long, and I had tape across yep. the um, e like each of the connecting parts of the post-it notes, and all of it was discolored except for the under the tape where the connection was. So it was like you could tell how old and fucked up <laughs> that was dick was <laughs> that I was holding to my face. And it was there for years. Yep. It was there for years. And people from all over the building would come in and I'd be on the phone and be like, hey, Mark Scott. <laughs> Christ. Shane, get in the booth. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Just getting too helpful. <laughs> Give me pockety for I have sinned. Um, my brother, my poor brother, uh, uh, roughly three years after the <laughs> Pokemon Gold incident. Oh my god! Uh, we were playing Halo Two, and this is he so good. he got um, quite uh, excited by the fact that he beat me in the game, which was rare. It was very rare, uh, and he started to torment me, which. Uh, inspired within me the urge to gently hurl the Duke Xbox controller Ooh. his way. And as we know, back in that day, you know, the controls were wired and unintentionally it hooked and travelled towards his mouth uh, and hit and broke his braces oh. that he got that day. Oh! Uh, Yes, and uh, he <laughs> proceeded to bawl his eyes out, run to mum, who took him straight to the dentist to uh, have them fixed in less than 24 hours from when he received them. From whence they came. From whence they that came. It was an expensive rage quit. It was expensive, <laughs> yes, that's it. Oh, uh, God. And he never dared try to beat me in Halo 2. <laughs> again. So you won. I you're like, I don't yeah. know why my brother didn't like video games. <laughs> it's so weird. What, He's looking at the mountain bikes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like a 24 yeah. hour return thing? Could you, did you, was your mum sharp enough to go I back and like, like, these fell off? What kind of shoddy job yeah. have you done here? He just bit yeah. into an apple. An apple. An apple. <laughs> exactly. One apple. Braces can't take a Duke Xbox controller. <laughs> what have I bought myself? Braces yeah. aren't cheap. Yeah. I yeah. 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 Uh, I didn't get much grief from, from mum for that, surprisingly. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, oh, yeah, you got yeah. away with. Your poor almost brother. Murder almost there. murder. Almost, yeah, my poor brother. Now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, poor Aaron. Give uh, him a call after this. You don't need to be yeah. uh, the best gamer in the household. You just need to intimidate everyone exactly. else. Exactly. You the just household. need to be able to. Fair enough. Yes, injure the yeah. other competitors, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, you still play a bit of Halo. We've played Halo oh, a couple of times. Yeah. Wednesday nights. I, I need to jump on. You gotta I've be got jumping hockey on. training. I know. I've got, I've got the I've, the Discord events. He's out there. Let me talk to, to, to the hockey association and have that move. Have that move. Yeah. He's out because there we couldn't possibly play video he's Halo one another. He's out there with his insatiable lust for busting teeth, That's and he's right. like, I've got yeah, to go somehow. Like, uh, yes, <laughs> swinging the chair. Wednesday Halos. I will be there at some point. I promise. Nice. I'm there. I'll be there. Peter, back in the booth. Uh, thank you for welcoming me back after um, I confessed such dastardly deeds earlier. <laughs> um, he's stalling. He's forgotten his sins. I did. I was looking it up. <laughs> I, I write my sins down on my Lenovo ThinkPad. Um, <laughs> Forgive me for buying a Lenovo. Forgive me for my Lenovo ThinkPad. 
cast your mind back to the year 2003. Internet came in phones back then. Uh, this is you telling the priest. This is me telling the priest. Yeah, okay, cool. Just making sure. Uh, uh, this is an Amish church. Um, so we had this thing called dial-up. These internet. were the speed rounds, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, speeding up. Speed well, you couldn't with dial-up. Uh, cool. But the point was that your internet came through your phone line, so you couldn't use the phone and the internet simultaneously. There was a general understanding that um, everyone in the household needed to, uh, you know, be courteous to each other and allow each other the time that they wanted on the phone or on the internet or whatever. You would just like book time with your family and be like, oh, I want to do this. Oh, for me, it was I want to play enemy territory with my mates mm. uh, during this time. We're playing a tournament soon, so we got to practice. Uh, my sister is, so I would have been 13, 14, probably 14, 2004-ish. Uh, and my sister is uh, 18 months older than me, so she was like at the age where she was calling friends all the time, starting to see boys and call boys as well. Uh, and uh, she had come to me. I was I was playing enemy territory, and she came into the room and she said, "I want to make a phone call. Can you wrap this shit up?" Uh, and I was like, "Absolutely. Give me like half an hour." She came in like 40 minutes later, and she's like, "What's the deal?" I was like. 20 minutes tops then she came back in and with uh we were at the age where phones also were wireless like you could take the handset off and walk around with it for a while before it went flat in two hours um and she walked in she had the phone she said i want to make a phone call and i said i'm not stopping i need to practice and she threw the phone at me <laughs> she missed me she missed my head she missed the monitor which was square uh <laughs> If it was a 16.9 monitor, it would have taken a hit for sure. But as a square monitor, the phone went and hit the wall uh, behind the monitor. Uh, and then there was just an all-out brawl. Uh, a, good, I, a good old fight. It was like a... I mean, she used to beat the shit out of me, if we're, if we're honest. Uh, so she kicked sister. my ass. Um, but I never really learned. And it was my fault I was being selfish. So I, I regret that I was selfish. Uh, and I'm glad that the, day, the times have changed and now you can be on the internet whenever you want. Mm. And no one ever wants to be on a phone call. <laughs> the segment sponsored by your local ISP. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. You learned something. Mm. Yeah. A tussle learn. with a sibling. She used to crack me. Us. She used to crack me in the nose, and I'd have a nose. Really? Voice. And then we'd run inside and be like, "Yeah, check it out, mom." <laughs> <laughs> she hit me, and I'm bleeding. <sighs> yeah. I'm glad my brother wasn't like that. You know, just like <laughs> you were the I... oldest sibling. Yeah, yeah. You were doing the beating. Mm. Didn't seek revenge. Yeah, I was yeah. the same. He's a much better person than I am now, I think about it. I have yeah. an older sister too. We never tussled. We never even like, I think when we got old enough that she was like, oh, why didn't we ever tussle? And she kind of like half punched me in the arm and I just gave her a dead arm. She's like, I'm glad we never did that. <laughs> I was like, don't, don't do this. My sister used to tie me up in the closet and time how long it took me to get out. That yeah, that wasn't thing. a game. We worked that out last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. I that was, was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Ruby's got another. I'll be quick. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, throw me in and I'll, I'll smash through this one. I'm not answering questions after this. I've never cared for Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Let him out. <laughs> Ruby. Ruby. <laughs> uh, <hi. laughs> uh, Chad. Yes. Never cared for Job. <laughs> A man of taste. <laughs> Are you sure I should say this? Which one? That one. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Thank you, Meadow. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. Sometimes I play a game where I Google a video game character with safe search off and time how long I have to scroll before a deviant art foot fetish picture shows up. I called it find and feet like hide and seek and it means I've seen probably more video game foot fetish art than people who are actually jorking their peanuts to it. Jorking their peanuts. Oh. Jorking mm. their... Mm. Right. <laughs> and she's um, out. <laughs> I don't think you can be saved. Yeah. yeah. You um, anyone could be saved, actually. Yeah. <laughs> With enough prayer. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. All right. Well, that's our show. That was gaming confessional, pockety, whatever it's called. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I mean, it just gets worse as it goes on in the best <laughs> in the best way possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Lovely stuff. There you go. Uh, coming up next, we have the post show. So uh, make sure you stick around for that. Um, it's probably going to be better than the main show tonight. Uh, <laughs> this, this let's 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 walk this back a little. We had fun. We had fun. Great also, time. this has been a delight. Yeah. I've really enjoyed tonight's episode. Home Tony will absolutely come Home back Tony next was week. Was a, was a hoot, and I've really been waiting for confessional for a while. I yeah, really, no, really no. enjoyed that. I also just want to put shouts out. It's like sometimes we lead up into this show with a like some like last week's. We we put a little uh, some other things we hadn't tried before, and it stressed me out up until the point we ran it. And tonight was just a joyful kind of show, which I actually genuinely get a kick out of like sitting in and being like, let's just actually enjoy yeah, yeah, talking yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. having fun, yeah, talking absolutely. about video games, all this kind yeah. of stuff. So I just want to say my confession is I had too much of a good time. Oh, <laughs> oh back in the booth. Oh, someone mentioned, uh, Elson, where's the hot tub? Uh, thanks for everyone who tuned in on Monday for our stream. Yes, absolutely. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, there seem to be some positive sentiment, so maybe we'll do some recurring hot dog streams. Up. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a scam. It, it was, was just... quality content, better than what arguably a lot of the internet has been doing yes. recently. So totally, just, just yeah. I mean, I think people were disappointed that we weren't in a hot tub. Uh, but keep uh, wanting more. It wasn't not a hot tub stream. Exactly. It absolutely. Well, I mean, it was a cold tub, I guess. <laughs> anyway, that's, a, that's that's beside the point. We do have the post show coming up, so everyone in the gold tier, stick around for that. It's going to be a good time. I uh, I. I I'm going to hate to see what the creative is tonight. Oh, God. There's going to be some... Blowing rainbows everywhere. Yeah, yeah there's going to be too much rainbow. Uh, Shane, where... Uh, well, I mean, we should be we should be on the superhero streamers. Yes, 100%. Uh, if you'd like to support groundbreaking cancer research uh, and you can fundraise amongst your own little community, then please do so. Superhero streamers uh, is our campaign that's running from now until May 31st. Uh, Every dollar raised is very is valued, is helpful. Uh, so please, uh, if you can raise a little, raise a lot. Um, sign up on Tiltify. Context okay. for the superior stuff: Is there any sort of like like how about how do people go about doing this in terms of you're setting up a Tiltify, you're streaming? Yep. Do they have to be superheroes? No, not at all. It's you just can be the, anyone. Okay. The superheroes check. are the cancer researchers doing the life-saving work. Yeah. Uh, so they're the superheroes that we want to support. They can't do that unless their uh, cancer research projects are funded. Lovely. Which is why we need the donations and the fundraising. Uh, uh, yes. So please do sign up for that on Tiltify. Obviously, I um, want to say thank you to everyone here and the entire community for your support, um, particularly in the time that I've been with Cure Cancer. You've been incredible ambassadors and always willing to, to help uh, and your community is just absolutely fantastic. I think, um, you know, after the, 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 the Scarty pin that we sold at, sold at PAX That's last right. year, oh, yeah. uh, more than 40 That's odd grand me. raised by the, um, by the back pocket community. So uh, yes, 100%, hashtag fuck cancer, confused echidna, 100% well, agree. We should say congrats to you, mate, for your run at, uh, yeah, at Cure Cancer doing that and with Game on Cancer, it's always been uh, an absolute pleasure to work with you, but also to work with the initiatives you guys have run. Obviously, pitching towards the gaming community, it's been uh, a heap of fun because we've got to do, uh, yeah, charity streams, but also everything has been involving something fun that we already uh, like or involved with, as, uh, like in terms of we've done Starfield, Redfall streams, all that kind of stuff. We've just done like fun, silly stunt stuff. We get to have the fun doing it. You guys come to us and allow you, us you to You do like, all the hard work and then we get to have fun. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it's not been too it. hard for us. Okay. Let's be real. Yeah. Uh, so, no, <laughs> we, we really appreciate it. you bringing us in on that <laughs> and getting to be part of a bigger cause like that because, as I said, it has not been much work for us. We get to have the fun. Uh, the audience does all the work, as do you, you and your team uh, over at Cure Cancer. So, uh, wishing them all the best. Obviously, wishing you the best 100%. in your new endeavors and uh, what you're moving on to as well. But... Always, as I said, friend of the show. Welcome back anytime. Actual friend. No, just friend. friend. Not of the show. You don't need the of the show Aww. caveat. You're okay. just friend. Just friend. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's been a blast. Uh, thank you again. Uh, and yeah, there's going to be an awesome thing that we're working on together that we can't talk about yet, but I'm very excited. I will be here for that. Um, and getting coffee. Stay tuned. Yeah, getting coffee. Get, getting yeah, coffees. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll let our community know when that happens. 100%. Where can people find you in the interim? Uh, yeah, it's Shane Bailey on the socials. Uh, I post mildly entertaining things every now and then. Um, yes. You're always doing stuff. 
Oh, You're yeah. a busy oh, beaver. Actually, yeah, actually. I our audi- our I summer to- audience tuned into uh, your Halo 2. Um, I was about to say, yeah. we did a Halo 2 uh, table read for the, uh, last year's Holiday right. Spectacular. Yep. About two and a half hours, 14 cast members. We reenacted all of Halo 2. It's been such a blast that we're going to do Halo 3 for superhero streamers probably in May. Halo 2, the, the novel or the pl- like? Because it no, was just top to tail, the game. The yeah. game. The game, yeah. The cutscenes, all the dialogue in mission. <laughs> all the it shooting was... sections. Pew, 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 grenade. <laughs> yeah, pew, pew. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, it was a blast. Yeah. yeah so cool. we're doing Halo 3 uh, probably in May sometime. Don't have a date yet, but we'll be fundraising as part of the superhero streamers. It's going to be awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. Trash is here. Hey. Hello, hey, Trash. Trash. Hey, Trash. How are you going? We're, we're at the end of the show after some <laughs> weird things have happened. Uh, tomorrow, Pocket Buds is dropping. Hey. So get your ear holes ready for that. Um, tomorrow's episode is called D&D is for Chads Now. And it features Zach Naum. <laughs> Bam. Uh, so the Friend of the show, Zach. Friend of the show, Zach. Uh... And real friend. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Now you can't not. Now we can't. Now not I know. It. I've, I've talked myself into a <laughs> corner. Everyone's our best friend. Um, topic is uh, Dungeons and Dragons being cool now, kinda. Uh, and obviously, Zach, you will remember from uh, a few episodes ago, Zach was on the show uh, in the studio on Thursday, um, and you'll probably know Zach from Ice Big Giant, uh, where he makes a lot of D and D content. Um, and the bonus episode for those of you at the gold tier, you can get access to the bonus episode tomorrow as well. Is Ruby and Zach talking about their personal D and D characters, um, which uh, I assume gets very sexy. I don't know. I don't know what D. I don't know what D and D is. I don't know oh, what sexy a is. Oh. A little bit. Just a little bit. I think I'm just a girl. Love and maybe also funny. Okay, funny. Funny, funny. funny and say sexy funny. or just funny? Bit of Not sexy. Fair enough. Wholesome. Monday, we will be streaming on the Back Pocket channel. It will be Ruby streaming. Spore? Oh. Oh. oh spore. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> spore stream. No, it's you never rock. asked for it, and we're giving it to you. Yeah. It's Ruby yeah. doing a spore stream. <laughs> <laughs> she did, we, I mean, again, we've been playing around with doing extra streams, and Ruby was like, can I stream spore? And yeah. it's like... <laughs> Sure, like no one's gonna say no, but do you wanna? And apparently, what did you say? All I recall of Spore is it was like E3 game of the show for five years running. Yeah, everyone was like, "Oh my god, Spore is gonna revolutionize everything." Yeah, and it came out it was like a seven and a half out of ten. Yeah. Uh, Ruby likes making yeah. weird little things. It is uh, totally well, up see, Ruby's alley. The thing is, is my mother. She's always coming to me and she's saying, "Ruby, when are you gonna have a baby?" And I <laughs> thought, well, that's like nine months of work. So what I'm gonna do instead is make my own creatures, my own baby. Oh, who is this mother? Who, mother who Ruby. Is this character. <laughs> Uh, I would like to see you create characters in the Spore character creator and then just draw them and that'd be the whole stream. Because the game of Spore is not fun. But the (laughs) character creator is cool. But the game that Ruby makes of adopting said Spore creatures, treating them as a mother Mm. and whatever that character was coming back to that stream, I'm going to tune in for that one. There's something lovely in that for sure. Excellent. Uh, That is our show, everyone. Uh, Thank you (laughs) for tuning in, Um, especially to those of you who support us on Patreon. Uh, this show is funded by Patreon. All of the dollars that come through to the show go into uh, making all this stuff happen. Go into printering for making that stuff. Uh, they go into all the socials that we make. Um, uh, ben, who's our excellent um, uh, uh, community manager and um, social media manager. Um, so all of the support that comes through the show, we really, really appreciate it. Please support us if you can. Um, if you can't support us with dollars, you can support us by sharing the show around with your friends and family. Um, that does not quite as much work, but enough. Um, and then you can head to backpocket.gg for links to everything, which is our Discord, which is free to enter, uh, our socials, our Redbubble store, where there's some updates to the Redbubble store, so make sure you check it out and see there might be something for you there with the 2024 uh, merch and logo. The socks have changed colour. The socks have changed colour. I know, things get we, weird. <laughs> we will be back next week uh, for all of you at the Gold Tier. We'll see you in the post show. Shane, you've been a delight. Oh, thank you. Gus? You've been two Gusses. Am I the real one? <laughs> Stephanie, you've been quite ill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh and Ruby. Bye bye. Bye Everyone at home, see you later. Fantastic. Bye. Lemons!
just hit him with a controller. <laughs> <laughs>